Hey everybody, it's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. I don't know why I was feeling Bob Seger this morning. It's Christmas. It doesn't really resonate for Christmas. Although he does have like a little drummer boy song, but I, I, didn't, I didn't look it up. I love this song. This is, this is the shit we listened to when I was cruising around with all my buddies in the 70s. Oh, it's not my favorite version of it. But anyway, there. That, that's what it was. I was far from home. Anyway, no, I'm not too far from home. I'm out in the kennel. I gotta get this intro done. I still got a house full of people. My son-in-law and daughter and grandson are here from Florida. My other daughter and her husband are here all week from Midland. My other one and her husband drop in and out all week. It's been crazy. In fact, someone's gonna bust in this kennel and probably stop me right in the middle of this intro, so I will try to be fast. I promise. I promise. Anyway, so... This is going to be part two of the Justin in it. This, this thing got really out of hand. Uh, not out of hand, but unbelievable amount of responses. I hope, like I told everybody, if I didn't get to your specific question, there was so many questions in each genre that uh, I think your questions have been answered. But if it was really something in particular that you didn't think was you got any help with from this interview on the question and answer forum, then rewrite it to me, and I'll submit it. i got a save file for that, for questions as they come in. Because then people end up listening to this episode, you know, six months or like, or three months or three week ago episodes. And go, oh, i got to get a question in for Justin. They don't really think about the fact that it was recorded in, you know, November. So anyway, oh, where do we start? Patreon patrons. Oh, I understand there's been a lull. Well, it's Christmas, you know. Everyone's buying presents. No one's getting, you know, no one's going to jump on the Patreon and, and hit the $5 donate button. Well, you're going to miss out on the, you're going to miss out on some stuff. So if anybody, by January 15th, anybody that's a new subscriber, I mean, we always get one or two, well, we always get at least one a week. Uh, sometimes we get two or three a week, but you never know. Um, if you go to Patreon, you can go to the website. And click the donate button <clears throat> or go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com, and you'll figure it out. You're not stupid. You listen to this podcast. You, you like listening to stupid, but you're not stupid. And uh, you can figure out how to become a part of this group. Now, right now, everybody knows that the best Gunner Kennel discount is through Patreons only. Okay? No offense to my regular freeloading listeners. I love you all. Um, but they get a really nice discount on Gunner Kennels, and that's the way Gunner wants to run it. Starting in, uh, the reason I said January 15th, that is technically my fourth year anniversary. Uh, Backridge Ammunition is going to have some specials next year. And who else? Gumleaf Boots is going to have some specials next year. Okay? So Backridge, Gumleaf, and the usual gunner. You just, you can't beat it. Otherwise, if you just like the show and you want to give me a few dollars a month, I'm going to, we're getting not close, but I'll bet you another year of this with my regular sponsors and Patreon. Uh, I'll be able to take this show on the road for almost every episode. Now, that ain't exciting. Whew, boy, is that thicker than thicker than anything. Anyway, so let's just run down them. Everyone knows I feed Purina. Everyone knows Purina feeds my dogs. And everyone knows that I've been feeding Purina for 25 years, way before I started the podcast. Glad to have them on board. Um, you don't... In fact, we have a Cocker Spaniel, which is mine. We have a Labrador who's fussy. We have two Broncos from Florida and all my Broncos. Hey, come on, Miller, quit. And uh, see, they hear me talking about Purina. They think it's dinner time. And they're all eating my food. They had no problem eating my food. Truth be told, I instructed my kids, you better feed Purina. But it's like kind of nice. They come here, it's like going to Justin's Kennel. All dogs get Purina Pro Plan, period. That's all they get. And, oh, come on, please. I'm trying to get... God, I love doing this in the kennel because I can smoke and drink. And it, I'm not drinking yet. It's Sunday. What is it? Almost 1 o'clock on Sunday. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Purina. That's what everybody feeds. You feed it. I feed it. Gunner Kennels, you, everybody knows how important my, my association is with them and their discount and their safety for your dogs. Um, don't. Don't think you're safe without that. Yeah, I knew what I was going to say. I got my, my son-in-law came in with a bunch of fish heads. They went fish. My son-in-law from Florida wanted to go ice fishing with his brother-in-law and one of the kids that grew up with my daughters. And they went ice fishing this morning. I thought that Flo Florida boy was going to freeze his ass off. But, you know, when the fish are biting, it don't really matter how cold it is. Got all thrown off there. Anyway, so 
with all these extra dogs, we have more dogs here than we can hold. I took two gunner kennel, large gunner kennels, brought them in the house, because his two dogs are house dogs, although they can stay in the kennel, his two Broncos. So they sleep in our gunner kennels in the house, and across the top of them, because it's tall enough to keep it away from the grandkid, put a piece of plywood over there, like a two foot by six foot piece of plywood, and that's where all the party snacks and everything go. Is it too heavy for a gunner kennel? Of course not. We could stand up there and have a family dance on it. Uh, but anyway, so see, they come in handy for end tables sometimes. So you know, think about it. Beretta shotguns, we shot the A500 yesterday with Backridge paper number sixes. I, I don't know if it was the gun or the shells. I'm going to say it was both, but I, I had the two boys shoot it. I shot it a bunch, and uh, we're going to go to a uh, preserve tomorrow. We're going to go hit a preserve uh, just because you know we want to get some birds for a, for a big dinner, and uh, we can't find enough pheasants around here, and there ain't enough grouse. And these two guys, trust me, I can barely hit a grouse. Neither one of them can hit a grouse if they were standing inside of a house and was sitting on a shelf. So uh, we're gonna go to preserve, and we're gonna be shooting all my Berettas and all backridge ammunition for the entire time. Good Lord, where does that leave me? Okay, Orion coolers. I'm sorry you're not getting the workout you should. They're on the porch. Everything's in it. We didn't have to put ice in it because it's just, just the perfect temperature. But all the pop, all the beer, everything's in the Orion cooler. Everybody's, I'm using them to sit on in the morning because i got to go outside with my coffee and smoke, and they won't let me smoke in the house. And So there, Orion coolers is now my lawn chair out in the, out in the breezeway. Onyx maps, we've been playing with that. Um, in fact, I was showing my neighbor the other day. Uh, Dale Workman was over at Jerry's. We were cutting some wood, and he wanted me to show him the, the app on the phone. And Dale was like, cool, let me see it. Now, you know, Dale's like 75 years old, Jerry's 71. And I look at it, and he goes, no, that's that's not my property. No, it's not. And I said, yes, it is. It's right there. You're next to Brock Rosemont. He goes, yeah, but that's not my property because it doesn't show the cemetery next to it. I said, well, it doesn't show the cemetery, but it shows your name. Goes, he goes, that's not my name. Well, it was his property, duh, Dale, was already put into his two daughters' names. And, you know, they got the names backwards. And, it, ding, you know, Dale, we blew it up. And it turns out he's parking a bunch of junk on state land, literally owned by the cemetery. I showed him the, the orange property line. I go, okay, okay, Dale, that building's pretty close. You got about four semis parked into the woods that's not on your property. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call the township on you. Fire. Our Onyx maps, probably used by law enforcement. Mountain ops, everybody's been drinking the crap out of it. My ignite's going like my Miller Lite. I don't know what's going faster. And gum leaf boots, actually, nobody's wearing them right now because it's just too darn cold. So there. Everybody, we're done. Shh, told you. 15, 16 minutes of me blabbering on and we'll be all set. GPS, but I got one collar giving me troubles right now. Uh, okay, we are live, Justin. Hey, everybody, I am back for part two of questions and answers with Justin McGrail at Black Creek Dog Training Center. Got that right Good in one sentence. You did. You were on I introduced the my guest yesterday with the wrong. <laughs> screwed that one right up live. <laughs> so anyway, which one are we? What are we going to start with here, Justin? Oh, let's get this. This is a long this, one. Let's knock is... that one out first. Oh, oh my God! I didn't read this much in grade school, <laughs> and I know who this is from. You know the guy? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks a lot, Doug. Uh, myself included, and many friends, younger, less experienced, retrieving. Trilers and hunters have experienced a dog in, in both instances, Hungarian wire. Uh, be a super pup and retrieve anything but common problems faced and suggestions. Pup grandstanding and parading with a bumper later turned into a retrieve that every time he runs a few feet past me then comes back. How do I improve this? Number two, moving on from bumpers with my dog and friends, same breed, both. Should I keep reading it or do you want to answer? That's your buddy's me? typing, probably. Yeah, that's my buddy's type. Yeah, he's worse than I. He's good with Instagram, but I'm telling you what, he, he, he Mrs. Coughlin would have a problem with him with my seventh grade English teacher. I think a third grade teacher would have a problem with that. Uh, experiencing refusals on birds. Sometimes the dog beelines 100 miles an hour toward the pigeon in training or competition, just stands over it, almost as if to say, you want me to pick that up? I just want to find the bird. I was wondering, is this because there was no hold and carry or force fetching or just pure lack of introduction to holding various items, fur or feather? Okay. Can I stop there? Yeah. Okay, so I'm slightly confused. Is this the same dog that 
it's, delivers bumpers but goes a couple feet past them and he wants yeah, to improve sounds it. Sounds like it. Yeah. But he won't pick up birds. Right. Okay. So he isn't going a couple feet past you and coming back, still holding the bumper. That's a pretty nice retrieve. That's not so bad. That's too bad. Yeah, yeah. boy, good job. Take it from him. Maybe not he, the trialing world. He should not feel. No, I think that's going to fly yeah. in the majority okay. of, of things. You know, okay. if it truly is a couple feet past mm-hmm. him and comes back still holding right. it, that's a nice retrieve. There's not. He's got. He should not. If this is the same dog we're talking about, right. I'm not worried about that. We got dogs not picking up birds, right? right. He says standing over birds. Standing so over there's birds. your concern, not yeah. going just a couple feet past you right. or anything. Right. See this all the time. My dogs retrieve sticks I throw. My dog retrieves balls I throw mm-hmm. in the yard and around yep. the house. But when I hunt, he doesn't retrieve birds. Right. If that dog is in his first season, keep hunting. He's demonstrating that he has retrieving instinct. But the dead bird is so different than the objects he's grown up with yep. that it's new. And so you're not seeing what he's going to do throughout his life. Right. You're just seeing the very beginnings of his first experiences with shot birds. Yep. And many times, if I'm seeing the retrieving instinct in other areas, right. just keep hunting, keep shooting well, birds, and on, let on it that happen. Note, what, yeah. That little story you told me when we let Taffy out. Yeah. You're cocker. Yeah. You said her first bird retrieves. She were not called, retrieves. <laughs> they were taken. They, they were, were the, run away with the bird they were in her mouth. The absolute yards polar the, opposite of a retrieve. Except <laughs> the fact that she was going somewhere with a bird in her mouth that was 100 right. yards in the opposite she direction. She would carry them completely away from me and lay, and then set them down and just play with them. And and you, your, your line of action was what? I did absolutely nothing. Right. I just kept hunting her. And... A month or two later, all of a sudden one day she decided, I'm going to bring him back to Justin. <laughs> and so when, when she, I probably started shooting her first birds over her, I want to say she was in the ballpark of maybe eight months-ish, something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> maybe seven. And uh, I didn't worry about it. It was in the winter. I was getting ready to hit the road. I just hunted her throughout the winter. And yep. lo and behold, she started to retrieve because I knew the genetics were there. Right. And that was just... <laughs> Holy cow, I got my mouth on the coolest thing I've ever had my mouth on, a dead bird. Yeah. And she wanted it all for herself. Right. And she didn't want to share her little prize. Right. And I let her have that. Yeah. I let her go through that and come to realize, okay, this isn't the only bird I'm ever going to have <laughs> in my life. It's okay. As yeah. a kid would say, that's yeah. not the first Playboy yeah. magazine yeah. I'm going to get to see. That's <laughs> so, be old enough to buy them on my own. <laughs> sure. So. You I, like that analogy. I you, love that. You always talk about Playboy <laughs> Well, it was a big thing when I grew up. I see that. Well, you yeah. found one in a garbage can. You went running down the alley like, look what I got. I can just picture you, the streets of Chicago. Oh, it was fun. So, so my point is, if, had I jumped in there with that dog and yeah. attempted to correct that, I could have done far more harm than good. Right. I could have got her to where, you know, oh, I get in trouble when I have a bird. Just, you need to let it play out sometimes. And I don't mean let it play out, see how it goes on Saturday and Sunday. I mean, let right. it play out for a few months. Right, right. Let that dog get a little older. Some age is always your ally, yeah. more experienced. Yeah. In the meantime, you know, you just kind of ride along with it, kind of manage to yeah. get your bird how you get your bird. Yep. And see how that dog develops right. on its own before we address it with right. formal training. Right, right. And that's important. So, where, where does he go from there? So he said right, the dog's so, standing over birds. So he mentioned the force train to retrieve. Right. So after this dog has been hunted a bunch. Okay. And now maybe these dogs don't hunt a bunch, and they yeah. just go to a test every yeah, now and then. Yeah. So he should be training in the off between tests and stuff. Right. Shooting a bunch of birds over him. So he gets a baseline of experience. Now we're dealing with a year-old-plus dog right. that's maybe had 30, 40 birds shot over it, over the, spread out over the course of his season, or right. more if you're lucky, whatever. And now that dog's getting towards a year and a half. Now we kind of know, all right, the genetics have had an opportunity to express themselves right. at this point. Yeah, yeah. now we kind of starting to get a feel, this is probably what we got. Right. Um, now where are the weaknesses? If the dog continues to not pick up birds right. and carry... Well, now we probably need to do some formal right. training. Because as, as you said before we hit record, retrieving is an instinct. It's 100% a genetic 100% instinct. 100%. Ge- it doesn't mean it can't be trained into a collie or a dachshund or a lhasa apsu. Sure. But yeah. 
natural retrieving is an instinct. It's inherited. And sometimes you only get so much, too. It, no, it? they're going to catch it everywhere from non-existent to... to half fast to... Or they can't, you know, they can't get something to you fast enough. They, right. They're just driven to do it. Right. Not because you taught them to do it. They just love to do it. Before I read more, I got to... Being a, you know, obviously you're a trainer, but being the trainer and comparing, like, my little cocker and, you know, and your little cocker, what you saw with that bird when you first noticed this behavior and you just said, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah. Did you, at the same token, because you've got so many dogs, mm. did you play fetch with her a lot when she was little or anything? None. See, do you think... And this I don't do that with my puppies. I, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask you because yeah. so many people... Yeah. I mean, they got one dog. Yeah. And it's fun to play catch with them. It's, it's fun easy. To, it's you, fun to wear them down. Yeah. Do you think... There's always that dog that it's bomb proof. Nothing yeah, right. screws up the dog. Right. Do you think we could use a little less fun retrieving? Yeah. Oh, I think with puppies. Or a lot less fun retrieving? You can always count on a puppy to be a puppy, which means very distractible, very excitable. Mm-hmm. Both of which are counterproductive for a polished retrieve, right? <laughs> you know, they're going to be pups. And yeah. so they're going to do goofy things like right. take it off, carry it off a right. different direction, lay down, chew on it, drop it, pick it up, drop it, play keep away. I hear that one a bunch. Keep away. That's yeah. more of a function of the age window than it is the dog's genetic retrieving ability. Mm-hmm. And I, you know... So you literally, I mean, you could almost say like, Justin buys a new dog tomorrow. You're not spending. You're spending zero time playing retrieve games with him when he's a puppy. I got a six and a seven month old pup back there. I've your never time seen a retrieve. Spent- I mean, I don't worry about till I start shooting birds over. So you you just want to get them out in the fields. I and, and expose them to other things. Well, my number one, and again, we need to train our dogs for what we do with them, and we don't all do the same no, thing. Obviously. So I'm a big wild bird guy. Right. So the number one for me is developing bird finding ability. That's my number one. Yeah. I need a bird finder. Right. I didn't just go put them out there. I don't walk dogs from bird. I need a dog and go out there and find them. Right. So developing those instincts in the dog, use of its nose, recognizing areas. That's hallmark that, with that, you. That, yeah. That's that's number one for me. I yeah. can I can worry about that retrieve later once that dog's finding, pointing birds, you know, producing shooting opportunities, and actually creating. The need for the retreat. Right, right. Okay, now we're going to worry about that. Right. You know, and I'm going to say worry about it, but now we're going to start to get a feel for what we have genetically. And of right. course, by then, most of the time, those dogs are now approaching a year old, usually, and yeah. something. And so you're not fighting that five month old want to do all right. these other things, but bring it back to you. I tell people if it's not going, every now and then you latch on to a puppy that wants nothing more than to bring it to you. Right. But if that's not what you're seeing in yeah. your puppy retrieving games, back burner. Yeah, it's not. It's important not important right now, yeah. and often you're just creating bad habits. Yeah, yeah, because we all, we all, you know, we teach our dogs a bunch of bad habits without even knowing it, and that can be one of the things we're doing. Sure, too I much wrote, retrieving. One guy wrote me the other day, and I didn't didn't print it off, and he he said, is he said, getting a new dog, first dog, blames the podcast on it. You know, it's going to get into this, and his question was, is playing tug of war bad for a puppy with the kids? <laughs> kind of like, kind of like if you have to ask the question, you kind of know the answer. Mm-hmm. Probably not the best thing if you want this dog to. <laughs> sure, you know, tug of war. Dogs love playing tug of war. Of course. But are you gonna? Do you want to play tug of war with that dog when it's a year old? It may not. You know, that's the thing not. with dogs. I guarantee you, we have people that listen to the things that you and I talk yeah. about, and they'll hear something and go. I did that with my dog, and my dog turned out great. Right. And then the opposite, I'm sure, is true as well. Right. You know, I didn't do that. What you're recommending that you do, and my dog turned out great. Right. Well, that's because they're dogs. Right. Absolutely. They're all different. They're all different, but it's my rule of 100. If you were to do this with 100 puppies... The majority. The majority... Over 51%. ...would be good for them. Well, I'm higher than that. Yeah. Or it would be bad, right? That's kind of how I base my advice for people. It's just on my experience. But there's always dogs that'll... Well, that's why I said things not there's true. always that exception to the rule that that and and then the bomb proof dogs. There's dogs that have been out in the field. <laughs> yeah. Their first gunshots were probably on a duck marsh, and they yeah. probably got away with fine. it. Sure, but we can't worry about that because that's not who's writing these questions. <laughs> What's this? Where's this guy going? Right, next? Where are we going here? Um, how do you clean up the retrieve of game? The problem with dog is only first season of quail in the bag, maybe twenty or thirty retrieves complete on birds and many contacts. May I add? 
He is great on point in relocating, but sometimes a little less interested or enthusiastic about getting them back to me. Mm -hmm. He will fetch on command, but when he gets to the bird, a little slow, this was in high cover. I'm expect, am I expecting too much from a young dog? He needs perhaps, does he need perhaps training table or just more contacts, chances to retrieve? He's kidding himself if he thinks it's fetch on command. He's, the dog's just kind of sounds like maybe waiting to be released or something. Something, there. yeah. But if it was a command, you know, I don't think he's done that because he right. asks about doing that. Yeah. So don't confuse what the dog wants to do with doing something because you have taught them they need to do that right. or must do that. Um, but I think he kind of answered his own question. Yeah. Am I expecting too much from a young dog? Yeah. And perhaps, well, then he goes into, and perhaps, you know, like need to go to a training table or do I just need more contact? But Both. the one question is, yeah. am I asking too much for a young dog? And that's what sure. we were talking we're about. Just, yeah. Most people are, I yeah. think. Yeah. You could, that's yeah. a safe one too. Yeah. Here's a really good piece of dog training advice that you can just put in your back pocket. Yeah. Within this is puppies, okay? Puppies. We're talking. So yep. prior to first season, throughout their first season of hunting, yep. regardless of their age, you got to be very careful what you begin to view or think of as a problem. Because as soon as you start to think of something as a problem, mm -hmm. you're sure enough going to try and fix it. <laughs> and met many times, that's going to go away on its own. And you're going to do more harm than good, muddy in the waters with wow. some so-called training solution there with this puppy that doesn't see the big picture yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the number one, a lot of people don't have the opportunity, not that they don't want to, they just don't have the opportunity to hunt enough. Right. So sometimes what one guy's given a puppy in one season, mm -hmm. that's two seasons for the next yeah. guy. And a calendar age isn't as critical as life experience. Yeah. You know, that really speeds up development. Right. Uh, those hunting opportunities. So yeah. people need to hunt more. <laughs> they, that's Basically. the bottom line. Bottom line. People need hunt to hunt more. more. Don't throw sticks for your puppy all the time, all day. And take them hunting. Make, take them hunting. Take them yeah. walking in the woods. Yeah. Let them find shit. Last question. A dog that hunts closer, some pointing breeds do, uh... What's the optimal? Oh, well, that's hard to say. What's the optimal range for a pointing dog on quail? If you believe your dog is too close, be it that you are <clears throat> over commanding him, how do you let him range more and quest without yelling or gesturing too much? I guess it's really a range question. Should I be less inclined to put the stop and recall on him more during field work? That boy, yeah, that is a hard one to read. Sorry, Doug. And let him build that range. Yeah. I guess this is the opposite problem for most pointer hunters. I guess most pointer hunters worry about sure, bringing so him some, in. Yeah, he's, he's got a dog that's a little close. A little close yeah. for his life. And he's got a uh, wire hair Vizsla. I uh, believe. That's yeah, yeah. What that's Hungarian what he's got. wire yeah. in the beginning, yeah. I've only got a small amount of experience right. with that breed. And I think they do tend to genetically be pretty close working dogs, the ones I've seen. And... Uh, so, oh, I gotta make a, I gotta make a, you got, a fix here. Okay, fix it. I think this is because it's Doug's email address. Because I knew when you said that, I'm like, uh oh, uh, Doug doesn't have a Hungarian. So uh, this is a question, not from Doug. Sorry, Doug. Retyped by Doug. Retyped by Doug. So my apologies, <laughs> gotcha. Doug. So anyway, yes, you're right. Okay. Um, back to that. Too. Yeah. May, maybe too close. Maybe not so, too close. So yeah. So any breed, you know, they hunt. Um, as they're driven to by their ancestors. So right. some dogs, that is their natural hunting style, is right. to be pretty close working. Yeah. A couple of those uh, wire-haired visuals that I have seen very much are out of that mold. Really? Close working okay. dogs. Mm -hmm. um, you can, he talked about commanding and gesturing. Right. You're not going to command and gesture your dog into covering more ground. Right. You're not going to do that. The only it's got to come from within. It's got to come from within. Yeah. More hunting, so the cover is certainly going to dictate that. Mm -hmm. But you can't. That's the people have said this since there were bird hunters and pointing dogs. You can rein them in, but you can't make them can't make, can't them, go make them go out. Yeah. Sometimes running with a brace mate and really open country yeah. will encourage them to go out a little right. further. If you want more range. <laughs> Then yeah, back off the handling. Anytime you know they go to yeah. show a little more initiative, shut up and let them go. Yeah, you know? I, I see that so much in natural ability tests. First time owner, he literally is afraid that his dog. And we've been waiting five minutes to see the dog do some independent work. Yeah, and as soon as that dog gets 50, 80 yards, and oh, I'm on my scorecard like dogs finally making first good cast at three minutes. Mm -hmm. I catch the handler going. Shh, 
Yeah. And now you realize that's what he's been doing with this dog. So the course the start of the hunt's always slow because the dog's like, I can't go anywhere. Yeah. He keeps calling me back in, you know. Well, and you're in the situation that you're talking about there, it's probably twice as bad when he's by himself because exactly. he's nervous and, right. and it's the test, right. you know. And so, but we're always telling him, you know what, like, it's okay, but yeah. let's not talk to the dog for five minutes. So I want to see. And then we'll yeah. sometimes see that dog. So sometimes people just overhandle it, over worry it. Yeah. But I guess just to wrap it, he just sent, he was, I think we've answered it. Yeah. Um, I guess the opposite problem from what I find a dog working fine in taller cover because he doesn't mind it being close, but in shorter cover would like more distance. So sometimes, you, like you said, you're going to get the package that came with it. And he says, excuse my ignorance, but. Is this a maturity or experience thing? Well, I think we answered it. It's yeah. probably a genetic thing. It could be. And then some experience, the, the, the more you can get out there, like you just said, the more you can get out and hunt that dog, then you're going to know if it is what the dog is. That's what's required for the genetics to come to their potential. You've got to get them out there. Yeah. Can't go once a month. Can't no. go once a year. No. you got to get it out. you got to hit it hard. Yeah. And then you'll know what you got. Yeah, and yeah. life is what it is. You can go when you can go. It's a matter of your expectations for your dog right. being in line with what you're putting into yeah. this. Yeah. If you're given this 25% commitment, don't expect your dog to be just a yeah. knockout. Yeah. Um, and it takes a lot of time. I think a lot of new newer owners to dogs um, don't realize that, you know, this is all going to come together a lot of times between two and three years old. Yeah. And look at how many of these questions are yeah. dogs between five and eight months old. I you know. You know. It's almost like they're, just, okay. they're like, oh, well, it's, it's not there yet. Yeah. I'm like, it's, well, it's not going to okay. be there That's yet. That's normal. Yeah. 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 Uh, question for Justin. I live in western South Dakota. Nice. Good spot to live if you're a bird hunter. I mostly hunt upland, some waterfowl. I have a three-year-old small monster lander female. My question is about retrieving. I know she can do it. She had a wonderful natural retrieve at six months. Again, we don't know if that was on birds or bumpers. Yeah. Um, uh, she had an excellent retrieve at six months. We got a few months of hunting in when she was a pup. But second year out, she would not bring birds back. She would, however, bring birds back in the water. They, I would always say they tend to do that. They mm -hmm. don't leave them in the water. Um, when other and, and when other dogs were around, that's competition. Uh, and she had continued to do that last year and this year. My question is, what drills could I use to help her figure out that bringing back, bringing birds back when she is by herself and on land, what drills could I use? Uh, she is, she's great at finding the down birds and standing by them, mouthing them a little bit until I'm able to get to her. I know she can do it, but is she just deciding that she wants, it's just her deciding that she wants to do it. Well, just because you know it doesn't mean she knows it, but um, that's anthropomorphication of, <laughs> of of critters. It's a big word I used, didn't it? It is. You know what that means? I do. Okay. If the oh, if the listeners don't know, that means putting human characteristics into our canine friends. Yes. Um, she will also bring back bumpers when on in training, but the training is just myself. Um, reading articles from trainers and listening to podcasts. Uh, never professional trained. Uh, she's a great pointer tracker, which I've never seen a Munster Lander that wasn't a good tracker. Yeah. Um, listens well, but she could just, she'd rather just keep looking for birds than bringing them back. Any advice would be great. Yeah, it's not uncommon, even amongst all the pointing breeds, right. to be exactly in this, guys. Average. Yeah, one out of three, yeah. you know, a pretty good natural retriever. But that the rest of them, much like this, right. are recovering, helping you recover your birds. They're fine. Helping, they're hunting dad. They're fine in that locating the bird for you so the guy can be happy with what he's got he's got a dog that hunts finds points tracks birds tracks finds the down bird and everything mm -hmm. and he walks over there as long as his back is good he can bend over and pick I, it up I, now if it's important to him right if it's really a priority if he's gonna go the rest of this dog's life go going i i really wish this i can't stand this <laughs> right. drive me crazy right okay then he's gonna have to train it Right. It sounds like that dog's had a fair amount of experience. Yeah. You know, and he lives South in... Dakota. Yeah, right. And so uh, we're not going to burn the rest of our time here with the right. ins and outs of the trained yeah. retrieve, but that's that's the route he needs to that's go. That's the place where, especially, again, he's not a puppy anymore. We're not yeah. worrying about a puppy. Nope. We're worrying about a dog that had a lot of wild bird contact. It's like second season dog. Second season. Yeah. Or, and yeah. so now it's time to yeah. either, you know, if yeah. you can't do it, and it sounds like he's only used yeah. media to, yeah. to learn... 
maybe try to find a good trainer that can work hands on because the problem with the trained retrieve videos and it's, stuff is every dog is so different yeah. and there's predictable glitches in that process right. that an experienced guy knows is coming right and can prep the dog for those little hurdles that are definitely right. coming you did my job for me you answered the you know he's kind of like i know she can do it Water, they don't have any other choice. They got to abandon or bring it back. Right. And they Another don't want dog, to abandon it. They don't it. want to abandon it. Not if no. they're any good. No. Right. Uh-huh. And then they get to shore and they spin. And it they out. can't stand over because they'll sink. They cannot <laughs> tread water for very long. <laughs> not in one no, spot. Not very long. <laughs> not very long. They got to abandon it. A dog treading water in. usually involves forward movement. Right, right. Yeah, so, really. <laughs> so the dog has two choices abandon it or bring it in. And he doesn't want it. So it's a good want. dog. He doesn't right. want to abandon game. Right. That exactly. is a sin of the highest order. And then, right, it should be. And then the other one with another dog around well i don't want that other dog to have it right. so i'll grab it but right. he's still clinging to that hope that i know she can do it right and I, she just needs to decide right. to well i think it's safe to say at this point he needs to make that a command and not a hope that she right. will decide to right. do it and then do it, it do it carefully and correctly absolutely and we can't get into all that yeah but, yeah if yeah if you're not certain on what you're doing um Consult, Call get, get some help. Yeah, I'll find somebody yeah. for you. Oh, here. This, this is while well, we're still kind of loosely on wire-haired visualists. Check oh, that, check at, that question. Okay, out. quit. Uh, how to build confidence in blind line retrieves for a two-year-old wire-haired vishla. First full season of limited work, working fe- hunting pheasant, partridge, and other game birds in the UK. Yeah. Wow. Um, memories in the UK. Memories are strong. Multiple memories unto 200 yards, steady and confident on picking up game and shot. Okay. How to build confidence in blind line retrieves for yeah. three. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting, isn't yeah. it? So, UK, yeah. I had to kind of, and I hope I'm not making any wrong assumptions here. I think this guy's using this as a pickup dog for driven shoots. Maybe. Well, he's in the UK. Yeah. Why else? And he uses the term memories. Most often you'll hear people use marks. Marks. Right? So he's got marks retrieved out to 200 yards Mm -hmm. and multiple long marks, it sounds like. Right. Why would you do that if you were only doing traditional upland pointing stuff? It wouldn't even come into place. It wouldn't wouldn't ever come into place. And now his question is about building confidence on blinds. On blinds. Okay. Which is not my bread and butter daily work. I've done it in the past. I don't have a need for it because I'm strictly an upland hunter mm-hmm. and when we get a long bird that falls we hunt our way over there right um right but <clears throat> the one thing i can tell this guy keep up the good work yeah. you know um so confidence in any kind of dog work comes from the dog being successful mm-hmm. so uh we're not gonna get into it but there's all kinds of very basic rudimentary initial training things that you can put a dog through to instill this you know yeah. beginning stages of the blind retrieve yeah and, and make sure you can't he can't make them too easy in the right. beginning because right. confidence always stems from success easy is good and slowly build right. as the dog is successful right then gradually make it harder right. and harder and harder yeah. and harder never going too fast right we don't want that dog to repeatedly fail Right. So that's where the confidence <clears throat> will come in. Yeah. That trust so less is more. The blind retrieve, yes, and he needs the ability to stop his dog, call his dog to him. Mm-hmm. The desire to retrieve will help the dog learn to go out and go left or right. go right. right. But mentally, that dog needs the utmost faith in his handler that there is something here to pick up. I just, right. my buddy, I got to figure it out. Right. And my buddy can teach me and show me where it is. Yeah. Make it super duper easy yeah. in the beginning. But I thought that was pretty good. I think that yeah, I mean, that's good advice for work. anybody who's doing Any some kind of dog that, that blind work and, uh, yeah. and trying to get their dog to do. And, and you know, the vers- the continental breeds are all, they're sure. not specialists at retrieving. Sure. Or, I mean, it, uh, it blinds, but they can be taught to do it well. I actually did one once. Um, I have two wire hairs. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> you can say that because as that. a former wire hair right. owner. That's like a yeah. black comedian being able to say things about black people. I can say things about wire hair owners because I put up with them for 16 years. Okay. <laughs> uh, one is six and a half. Okay, must be years. Yeah. One is six and a half, and one is just over a year. Both are females. We hunt mostly wild quail in southern Indiana. Yeah, there, some, oh, there are. Yeah, sure. I got a buddy down there with one of my brocks that can find some quail down there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also take a yearly trip to South Dakota to hunt pheasants. Both dogs were trained by me. I have an issue with the retrieving. That's odd for a wire hair. 
Mm. Um, maybe eating it. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, dogs will honor each other's points very well, but once the game is shot and dropped, the dogs will fight over the retrieve. Uh, they have ripped birds in half. I've seen them rip a woodchuck in half. Sure. <laughs> that ain't no easy feat. I'm, I'm needing help correcting this. Any help will be greatly appreciated. I mean, to me, that's a tough question. And I don't even know how you're going to approach that. Yeah, it is. Because the problem is he's hunting these two dogs that each want to retrieve. Right. That's yeah. a toughie. So he can do it. I would make sure that his younger dog is hunted independently enough and gets the chance to develop its retrieving. Uh, so many people always hunt their dogs together. together. Yes. And sometimes that's not always for the betterment Beneficial. of the younger dog. And sometimes it's aggravating for the older dog, too. And you'll see behavior that you didn't see from oh. your older dog. Oh. When you bring that pup in. Right. Your so the cure for this, though, we want to make sure that the younger dog understands that, okay, retrieving in and of itself is not a bad thing. Right. And that's why I want that young dog to have some hunting all on its own. All on its own. He's no competition for the retrieve. Right. And then you can put them together, and you need to set this up in the beginning, and you really need to teach one dog. When it's in that other dog's mouth, it's off right. limits to you. Right. And that re- requires some sort of training scenario set up. And probably and, some collar work at and, some point. Well, train, they need to be yeah. trained. If you can't right. control them, then you're not able to influence what they do. So he needs to be able to stop that dog. He needs to be able to call it to him. Right. He needs to be able, you know, woe should be there. All your high handling commands, he should be able to heal a dog right past the other dog that's bringing in a bird. It's all about exercising control right. in that situation. Right now... When that dead bird hits the ground, man, it's a free for it's a wire hair free for all, right? And <laughs> yeah, and that, this isn't even I shouldn't even have picked on wire hairs for this one. Any and dogs would do that. How many two dogs you know, especially a younger and older dog? Yeah. I mean, I just heard people talking about a trip to North Dakota that they hadn't hunted this group of dogs together. And three birds were eaten in the course of this afternoon hunt. Yeah. Or one was eaten, two were torn apart. Yeah. Because that dog yeah. just decided that that dog was not going to get to probably retrieve. dogs that usually hunted alone. Alone, or with at least a dog they were used they to. Knew, and they knew. It's crazy how a dog can just come up with another dog in some language that they speak to each other. Says, like, I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to act like a little ass today. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I never understood why when guys get together, everybody has to throw their dog out in the field. I understand nobody wants to leave their dog in the truck. But let's, the typical scenario I hear mm-hmm. where I feel these guys played their hand wrong, yeah. there's three guys and they each have one dog. We'll keep right. it simple, okay? Yeah. And there they go on their big hunting trip. And they dump all three dogs out in the first spot of the trip and they're running them all around. A, you kind of got chaos. And then B, by noon, you got three really tired dogs. Yeah. You should be rotating your right. dogs, especially if they're usually, if you got veterans that have worked together in the right. past and you got enough dog power right. for however many days you're going to be Yeah, there. you do got to do that math because you do. 25 years ago, my first trip to South Dakota, Jeff and I brought home two short hairs that looked like they were in a concentration camp. Yeah. It's a lot of work. We, for the we dog. really, I mean, Every hunt, Justin, we open that tailgate and put two dogs on the ground. We only had two dogs for the week. Yeah. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. So let's go to that one All right. next. All right. <clears throat> I am 27. I like to hear that. Young guy. First bird dog. Was gifted by a friend. At least he didn't say free. There's no such thing as a free dog. Free dogs are free for one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is an eight-month-old setter. Okay, we primarily chase pheasants and quail. I'm in Iowa, make a yearly trip to Kansas. Uh, dog has dog has here down, and I know, I'm not that bad at reading. I'm just reading the way it is, everybody, so don't make fun at Ron. I screw up my introductions enough. And I'm working on woe between hunts. Good. Uh, she did a great job in Kansas this year. Awesome to see her figure out birds. I have two questions right now. She will naturally pick up quail shot over her, but wants to eat them. Okay. And we'll point a rooster of shot, shot over her. How would I discourage her? How would I discourage the chewing, but get her to pick up the rooster? Yeah. My, my other question is, I didn't get a chance to do water introduction this summer, but I'm interested in getting in her an NA test in the spring. Well, I can answer that later. Um, Got to get her around some water. That's for sure. Yeah. And not hard water. The frozen. Yeah, yeah, that's that'll be yeah. next summer. Yeah, yeah that's next it's summer. It's a setter puppy. Uh, so. Write me back, and I'll yeah, I'll even give you my phone it. number. Yeah. We'll talk all about the NA test. Yeah. Um, anyway, so let's yeah. eat a quail. Yeah, and and won't pick up a rooster. 
and it's an eight month eight old. Month. Eight there month you go. Old. Keep hunting. Keep hunting. Keep hunting. I highly, highly, highly. Do. I've seen it plenty of times before. Mm-hmm. It'll turn into a, especially you know. And the reason why, for people who haven't figured this out, listen. Why does it not eat the pheasant? Because it would choke on a pheasant. <laughs> but the quail is small. I can get that all the way in my mouth. And I can swallow that. Head. It would swallow that pheasant if it could. If it could. <laughs> if it could, yeah. But it's big enough to go, hmm, that's a little big for me to take on. So this yeah. is hard for me because yeah. I say... I'm, I'm, this guy's got an eight-month-old dog. He's eating a hunt over a red. Well, and he's shooting wild birds over there. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Iowa and Kansas quail and pheasants, yeah, yeah. right? So he's got a nice dog here. Yeah. Most likely, this dog is going to come out of that. I call it puppy hard mouth, to mm-hmm. whether they're destroyed down the hatch yep. or whatever. They're small and quail. Yep. Um, I can sympathize with him because if they were pen quail, the dog was eating, so what? But you work hard for wild quail. Wild and quail really good to needs eat. to go on the plate. And you really want it to go on the plate. And right. so to sit there and watch that dog, oh, it makes you cringe, right? Yeah. And then the pheasant. So, you know, he's we're, we're in the latter part of December so he's only got a month of season left yeah you know keep getting out let it be what it's going to be if you go shoot some pen birds over the dog make sure they're big ones <laughs> and most of the time as that dog is growing up and gets its mouth on more and more and more dead birds it's going to ratchet down a few notches right. and probably won't continue to eat those yeah i would not advise any corrective measure at this point only you know maybe let it drag a cord so you can get a hold of it right do what you got to do to get the bird from them right any reason he couldn't hunt with a check cord on in good open country? So my rule of thumb, and no, it's fine. You can. Mm-hmm. Just I want everybody, anytime you're letting a dog in the field drag a check cord, you must, must, must have a way to locate that dog if he gets hung up. Right. And that means either a beeper collar or a GPS. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's to, I have found two check cords in my life hung up. And fortunately, neither of them had, and this was before GPS, yeah. neither of them had a dead dog on the end of them. <sighs> Both of them, the dog had chewed its way out. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was stuck. It wasn't coming free. Oh, that's, and the owner didn't yeah. find it. The dog chewed its way out of it. Wow. So that's the number one if you're going to let a dog drag a cord. But absolutely, you can hunt him dragging a cord. Right. Yeah. Right. Don't Not some 50-footer. No, no. no but that. I mean, that might even... Yeah. Well, well, he's got again, something he can get a hold of. Got, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, not to correct and do anything, but just like... Gives you an option if you get there and he's chewing the bird up. If nothing else, you can diffuse the situation. Yeah, you yeah. got something to get a hold yeah. of because that's the kind of dog. At that point, calling its name, he's not going to come. come when and it's... that's also the kind of dog that when you got close, yeah. he's probably going to pick it up and take off. Go, right. <laughs> Go the other uh-uh. way. Right. Yeah. Right. And he probably will start to pick up pheasants once he gets yeah. older and has more experience yeah. with it. So I found hmm. that was that, that one was, was interesting because never heard that he wants kind of something right in the middle, right? Right. Um, what do we got here? Uh, so, hey, this is an interesting one while we're on eating birds. Oh, boy. Uh, breed, Brittany, level, age, six, level of training. My daughter yeah. taught him to sit. Uh, everything else has happened by accident. In all seriousness, worked on wing and woe post, steady to flush, conditioned to e-collar, really only use stimulation to get him to come. Uh, he has never been a natural retriever. It's, that happens. Uh, thought about force fetch training, but decided I probably didn't have the patience. Probably decided on the yeah. error on the side of caution. Yeah, which is smart. He will he will hunt for dead birds, but you have to call him in and encourage him to do it. I had a short hair that didn't care mm-hmm. about hunting dead birds. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't want to go hunt again. She just wanted to go find another one. Uh, he will find them, and in the past, not even cared to pick them up until this more recent problem surfaced. Problem. Uh, just this year, he has decided to start eating birds. <laughs> okay, see attached picture. I didn't get to see the picture. <laughs> yes, this was a quail literally pulled from its throat. Not sure why this has started after all these years. Uh, how do I correct this? Yeah. On the brighter side, she's never shown much interest in picking up a bird. Yeah. So, so now, turn into an overachiever. <laughs> I hate to correct him at this point. <laughs> I like this guy. This I do too. Yeah, this guy's and, like Joe it, average. It doesn't seem right? like he's overreacting. No, like he's no. like I don't know. I don't well, he's just patient. going. Where, where did this come from? Yeah, at, at six years old, and I'd be doing the same thing. I'm wondering my. But you know, this off. guy is like, I like this salt to the earth bird hunter. Hey, I didn't yeah. really do a lot of training. Right. Yeah, I use a collar sometimes. If he doesn't come, I bump him Daughter a little bit. A puppy. He's learned the dogs learn how to hunt and find mm-hmm. and point birds and. Yeah. Uh, he says, you know, he's never been really good at hunting dead. In fact, he yep. doesn't pick them up or anything. Been there before. And now, six years old, he's eating his birds. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah, it's not common at all. No. Very, very uncommon. Um, none of my 
That's one thing, you know, I tell people, you got to remember, most of my time with people's dogs is when they're young. Yeah. And so I've never had any of my personal dogs pull this move. Mm-hmm. I have. And, and you've had dogs that weren't retrievers. Oh, yeah. So, you, so you've <clears throat> never seen them turn it on. I've and had dogs sudden... that weren't retrievers, dogs that were, I did the trained retrieve with, dogs mm-hmm. that were adequate enough genetically. I wrote out their instincts, and that was good enough for me, and I didn't do the training. So a little bit right. of everything. Right. Um, and lots of friends, you know, with their dog. This, this is not common. Right. Um, you, you kind of maybe hope it'll go away just as fast as it came. I wonder how consistent it's been throughout yeah, the really season. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, maybe take this dog to the preserve and buy like twenty-five quail and go kill every one of them for him and let him eat his until he gets his fill. You know, I heard of a guy that did that. Oh, I know I, a couple guys. That's wasn't what they it do. In one of the books I read? I don't know. Yeah. Somebody just he goes, ah, oh, have at it. Yeah. So you know when it's like um, your dad making you smoke the whole pack of cigarettes. Exactly. When you you want to eat them, here you go. Make yourself. You sick. want to be an adult? Smoke Make that whole pack. And sit down and smoke. Yeah. Now, <laughs> if he doesn't do that, and it doesn't, or he doesn't, I would and say it keep hydrogen work. peroxide on site in case you have to cause <laughs> get him to vomit. Get yeah. Him to vomit. Um, he really doesn't have anything to lose if the dog... I mean, we don't want to allow this dog to continue to destroy his game. No. That's no. a waste of game, right, right? Right, The dog already is not a retriever. Right. So he doesn't have anything to lose here. He's not worried about messing up a retrieve. Yeah. So with some perfect timing and a little bit of momentary <laughs> tap on an e-collar, if that dog grabs a bird and we're soon... Bam! That hard crunch, tap. Right. Tap. And then, you know, a little higher if it didn't register. Right. But that, and you'll see, oh, that dog will spit that out. Right. Right. We don't have anything. Now, to, he might go back to not picking up birds, but he didn't that's pick what up he birds did. for yeah, six years. Yeah, we're not, any, we're not backwards. So at least anywhere we're teaching him eating deal. birds is not yeah. good. Six years old, we're doing a fudge job here to try and <laughs> save his birds. Right. Yeah. Right. He already said he passed on the trained retrieve when he right. was younger. So if that's where he's approaching this, yeah. I'm not going to advocate that. Right. You know, it doesn't sound like he wants to do that, which is right. fine. Yeah. You know, he's been getting along. So, there you go. Try and flood him with a bunch of pen quail. Try it. See what that does for him. If that doesn't work, good timing on your little momentary taps on your collar should yeah. get him to not mishandle them. Because he's done collar Still not going to so. retrieve. Yeah. yeah. So, poor guy. That's a rare one. That is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That quirky behavior is always shows around, you know, first season or second season, all of a sudden you see things. So for your listeners, we got mm-hmm. two. We're down to two piles. We got the retrieving pile, <laughs> okay. which we're making headway on here, and then we got the miscellaneous miscellaneous, miscellaneous grab bag wow. pile. You want to finish out the retrievings and go to yeah miscellaneous. Then, All right, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, let's let's yeah let's go with retrieves. Yeah. Um, seven month old Dratar, and for those of you who don't know nothing, a Dratar is a German wire hair registered in Berlin through the GNA VDD. How's that for fancy right. analogies? Okay. We might have to hit pause oh, here. Oh, is it 3 o'clock? Got, eh, it's 2.52. That's your... close enough in, okay. in my world. We're going to okay. come back to this one in just a few moments. All right, All right we're back at it. We had a little Brock Francais uh, break. Dog, dog training break. A little dog training break. That was kind of nice. We should make that a habit, you know? Yeah. Every 10 questions or so, go work a dog. Uh, I might even really retain <laughs> something. That would be really nice. That was a nice break. So... Uh, yeah. All right, we got a seven-month-old Dratar. Obedience is decent and working on that daily. Has been exposed to pigeons and gunfire. When running a field, he does pretty good for his age. Stays in front for the most part. Always changes directions when I do. He's cooperative. Uh, issues I have is when I have shot birds or let him, let him harass some wing-lock pigeons. He wants to eat them. I shot a duck the other day, and he was kind of nervous about it and checked it out but didn't want to pick it up. Deal, seven month old again. Yeah. You know? uh, once I picked it up, he wanted it. <laughs> he probably jumped after it. Mm-hmm. Uh, after fo- and following after me, I tossed it for him, and he ran and grabbed it, but he didn't want to bring it back. I didn't chase him. That's good. I just continued to walk away, and he would follow, but he wouldn't come close enough to give me the bird back. He then tried to hide the bird. <laughs> Is the issue obedience? Or just being young, is the force fetch is is the or is the only fix force fetching? Okay. Well, he doesn't know if force fetching is the only fix yet or not. Right. So we've been talking to seven months yeah. old, still in the process of figuring out birds. What, yeah, yeah, and what we we don't know what we have. Right. So 
natural to be a little possessive at that age. Yep. Uh, you know, hide it. I've seen. I've had dogs bury them. So that's an old gene to stash food. You know, I, I had mean, a literally. German breeder told me if you had a dog, a female that buried game, don't mm-hmm. breed it. <laughs> that's how he felt about it. Well, sure, it's offspring <laughs> are going to do it too. Yeah, isn't it something? Not, not like every pup in the litter. But that is sure. weird. That's that an old gets, gene. Yeah. I would have never guessed that. You'd be amazed how fast some of them can do it. I mean, you can't even get to them, and that's and they put the dirt over with their muzzle, and I mean the that's whole deal. It. Oh yeah, poof, poof, it's underground. I come back later, yeah. feed my pups. They with come it. out of that though, mm-hmm. um, but sure, it's a genetic trait. So obedient. The training answer here is: I would really start in preparation. I would start to really strengthen this dog's come when called. Mm-hmm. To include, you know, distractions and times where the dog would rather do things other right. than come when called, slowly building obedience to come when called, because mm-hmm. that very much is our friend in the retrieve, right? Right. So, um, and see how he comes along naturally. Waterfowl have a completely different smell than upland birds. I've seen it all the time. Dogs mm-hmm. are very first waterfowl, a duck, you know. Yeah. Ooh, that is nothing like yeah. a quail or a grouse or right. a pheasant or anything. Yeah. Yep. And it sounds like he got over that pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. So keep hunting your pup. See what yeah. happens. Let him trail a check cord if you have a hard time getting the bird from him, you know. Not to break it down too bad, but what do you think? And I've seen people do it. I've done it. Yeah. So I'm, I don't know good, bad, or indifferent. Like, you know... Like you've always said, my Brocco is the one thing you can kind of count on as they retreat. Pretty darn good retrievers, you know, yeah. My wire hairs back in the day, yeah. good retrievers. So I didn't, I gave them fun throws. Sure. Now, as you're out hunting, I never do it when I'm hunting. Yeah. Because I don't want to throw a grouse on the ground and lose the tail fan. <laughs> but um, anything wrong with that, That given that fun retrieve of a, of a dead bird in training? Oh, not at all. Okay. Not at all. And especially, you know... If you got that check cord there, because mm-hmm. there's a couple little shorties we can do with the dog right after he got him, call right. him back into us, praise him and pat him, love him yep. up, and then the hunt goes on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, that retrieving, did we wrap No, retrieving? no. We oh, got, no, we're uh, still retrieving. Ah, uh, we got a couple more, and then we're going to be done All with right. this. Here's question eight and a half. We do have a lot of young dogs. Yeah. I'm glad, though. Yeah. Maybe the... Maybe in another year we won't get anything but uh, old dog questions. <laughs> All these people have their dogs fixed. A lot of them sorted out by then. That's, yeah. yeah. Uh, eight and a half month old Chessie Fosk. Fosk. I always heard it pronounced. I'm not even Fosk. sure how to pronounce it. It's to me. I, I call it a German wire hair from Czechoslovakia. Okay, Chessie Fosk. They look like one anyway. They do. Uh, and I believe they are bred with them. I don't know okay. that. Um, which is a wire haired pointing breed from Czechoslovakia. I there didn't even read the rest of the sentence since I got him at ten weeks. Old, I've been doing all the obedience retrieving training. He has plenty of game drive, finds birds, although he hasn't started pointing yet. Okay, he's young. Uh, my challenge is getting him to retrieve a bird after the shot. He finds that he finds a down bird with no problem, even comes near me, but doesn't want to give it up. He's mouthing the bird, but not biting hard on it. He's not bite, but not biting hard at and destroying it. I always have some treats with me. Uh, to reward him, but it's not enough to override his desire to hold the bird. And by the way, he retrieves dummies during training just fine, to a lesser extent, frozen birds. He is young, so I want to keep it positive with no negatives associations. Any tips? My first tip is, why are you shooting birds The dog's not pointing? Ooh. If he's, Good question. Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't be killing those birds. Why would the dog start pointing? This is working pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Finding them and flushing them. So yeah. he, I would confine his retrieving to uh, retrieving dummies. You know, yeah. it sounds like dog's got a lot of retrieving instinct. You know, he's nitpicking him a little bit on the delivery. Right, but again, right, we right. got a months or oh, eight months, seven months, whatever it is. Right. Yeah, we got a puppy on our hands here. Yeah. It sounds like the framework for a good natural retrieve right. is there. But he talks about shooting birds and he says the dog is not yeah. pointing yet. Yeah. So that's where I would not agree with what he's doing right. here and say, hey, you need to hold off killing these game birds or pigeon or whatever he's using until right. you start getting some pointing going on here. Right, right. right. And and that should come in time, but not if you keep killing birds that well, he's it, running in and flushing. It's, that's what the dog thinks everything is right. It's working. Yeah, yeah. yeah and we don't know how much point So his retrieving dog really has. isn't much of a problem. No. But if he is shooting, bo- if you've got a pointing dog and you're shooting birds that aren't pointed. Yeah. 
Like, if I owned this dog, I wouldn't know how he retrieved yet or not, because right. I wouldn't have shot a single you, bird over him yet. <laughs> right. He, yeah. He's going to have to show me a point. Yeah, we're going to have to start pointing birds point before we're shooting anything. So that would be my advice to yeah. that guy. Worry about the pointing first yeah. and see what comes on there. Uh, 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 so these two, let's do that one first. All right. Uh, hey, my name is Evan. I live in Maine. Nine-month-old German short hair pointer. The dog has a great mm. recall to come, and a desire to retrieve is definitely there. But whenever I throw a bumper or a dummy, he brings it back and won't even look at me to give it back. I wait there, petting him, praising him, but it takes at least 10 minutes till he's almost choking on it, till he gives it up. With that, I put him on a training table and started with my hands in his mouth, and he released when I gave. The command. Okay, he releases the bumpers on the table when I tell him to. But when do we, when, wait, but when, but when, I'm sorry everybody, my hands are cold and I'm, I'm reading shaky. Uh, but when we do a retrieve in the field, he will not give it up. I made sure to never tug anything out of his mouth when he was little. I don't know where this stems from. Hmm. Any help would be great. Yeah. Hmm. Whenever I throw a bump in, won't bring it back, won't even look at me to give it back. Yeah. Very possessive. Yep. Young dog. But he's he's right with the guy. He said, petting him and praising him. Yeah. And he just, and you, you've seen those dogs, I'm sure, around before where they're standing there holding it and like you go to reach for it and they turn their head away right. from you. They want that thing. So yeah. this is actually a dog that you can shape into a really nice retriever. And he's on the right track. He started some formal training to yeah. uh, train in a release command. Understand a Understand release. Understand yeah. hey, yeah. And mm-hmm. he did it on the table. Mm-hmm. Started the old gloved hand in the dog's mouth and yep. then a dummy. But when we go to the field, you mm-hmm. know, we got a different dog on our hands. That's because that dog's kind of got like the, you know, eye of the tiger, right? He's right. a predator. Yeah. yeah, this is different. Than We're hanging. at my turf now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's good. I like dogs that have that component yeah. in them. You know, they want it and they want it bad. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think because I'm on the home stretch and don't have a lot of training dogs in here. There is a way you can get a dog to drop something on command, and I don't know if you've seen it before with a little lift up on the flank by the oh, yeah. rear leg and the I call abdomen. it a twister. Well, yeah, but I don't actually twist it. Well. You just lift straight up on that, and they're kind of open. Now there's, you gotta, you gotta do that with some tact and, and finesse because right. too much is not good. Not enough, they won't spit it out. Right. And there's a way that. There's a right, just like everything with dog training, you know. Mm -hmm. I would be more comfortable if I had the right dog here and say, hey, grab your phone and just video this for five minutes and we'll show it to everybody. I'm racking my brain. I don't think I have the right dog here that has this particular trait. It's just kind of sticky with them, you know. They got it. They got a real firm hole on it and they don't want to give it up. Right, But that's what I do with those dogs. Yeah. And a, a I've little it. repetition of that, and you can get to where you got them next to you. They're holding it, praising and pat them. Right. And so much as touch them back there by the flank, and give, it, or yeah. whatever your command yeah. is. Yeah. I broke up comes. dog fights with it. Yeah. Yeah. So what people don't understand, and I, I don't want you to just try it at home. No, that's... But, it, it, it what, you know, I call it a, a, a twister, but that's because I've actually broke a dog fight up with it. Yeah. But, yeah, if you reach under a dog's skirt, let's say by a boy dog, there's a little skirt of skin. Their flank, where where the rear neck connects to their abdomen. Right. That skin under there is more sensitive, and you kind of grab it and pull up on it. Pull up on it. Just pull up on it. You gotta know your dog. Some dogs are more sensitive than others. You know, I've had some dogs, their back feet will actually come off the ground, you know, before they spit that out. Right. I'm not yanking on them, it's just a slow but steady lift until they go, oh. Open yeah. their mouth and right. spit that out. And I would do it first back on his table. Absolutely. With the bumper yeah. and get that timing down. Yes. On the table, you can kind of, ha- you know, I use this short little street lead, like a little 18 inch lead. Yeah. So the dog's always connected yeah. by 18 inches. Yeah. So I, I can reach his groin and I can reach his collar. My other hand can be on his bumper. Mm-hmm. And if I can't get it out, that's when I go and reach there. Yeah. And it's just like the co- he's learning to turn the pressure off again. Yeah, exactly. So he's, you're pulling up on that skin. He doesn't like it. Right. As soon as it's out. And it's real, out. the reason he's letting go, it's like almost thinking about turning around and seeing who's, who's, hey, well, he's who's opening messing his, with me. He's opening his mouth to kind of say, ah, hey. that, that gets uncomfortable. And a lot of times he'll turn and look. Right. At, yeah. He's like, what's that? What are you doing? Yeah. And that's an area that... And then as soon as the object's out, pressure's off. And use the word out. Uh, out. Or whatever command yeah, and, you want. Yeah. I mean, don't forget to yeah, do that, too, because you're training... It can it can be just like a collar. It can be out 
Rashara as you're pulling up on Rashara. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so again, little... as, as redneck as it sounds, right, mm-hmm. this is actually kind of finesse dog training here because mm-hmm. you do it wrong, you're going to make a mess. Right. Uh, and so if you're uncomfortable with what you were describing, right. if, you, if you could put your eyes on it, it would make sense. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe in the spring... Sooner or later, I'll have a dog here. I'll come over and I'll film it. Yeah. And I'll just send it to people who need it. (laughs) Yeah. There you go. Here's how you... I'll get on that. Get that out of the mouth. Okay. Last retrieve. Not that there may not be some retrieving stuff lurking in the miscellaneous miscellaneous pile. The grab This is the last one that's officially a retrieving pile. Probably a little late to the game for Justin questions. Mm. Nope. We squeezed you in. But I'll give it a go. I came into hunting, the hunting game late in life. Eastern Pennsylvania, only stocked birds... Started hunting birds around 23 years old. Was hooked since day one. In March of this year, I got my first German short hair pointer. Uh, he was almost he was almost three years old. 60, I'm guess point pound, right? 60. Yeah, 60. 60 pound ticked GSP. Okay, we didn't need that much information, but I appreciate it. Current owner with two small children, so he could no longer keep him. Okay, that's why he got him at three. Uh, we went to check him out. Long story. He ended up with my girlfriend and I. He had a prior e-collar training and shed training. The e-collar was very obvious once I got him. Have yet to try shed hunting. Started him on basic obedience, recall, retrieves to start with, then reinforced with e-collar. After picking up our next GSP for the family in August, we introduced him to pen-raised birds. First showed him, showed him and gained interest, but then with birds in the field and eventually birds in traps. I did, I did forget... He had no intro to guns, and how he acted around fireworks, I feared a gun-shy dog. Then, we slowly introduced him to starter pistols. Good to go. Uh, He retrieved well. Would leave the bird when I say leave it. Okay. Once pheasant season started, um, he essentially went above and beyond anything I expected out of the dog that seemed to be abused and kenneled the majority of his life. So, I guess he was shocked at how good he came out. I'm getting this confused with... Then after picking up our next GSP pup, I'm sorry, I'm, are you tracking with this one? Well, keep going. Okay. So here's my question. Since <clears throat> hunting in this season, his leave it has gone out the window. He will still bring it to me, but he rolls the bird in his hard mouth, leaving to me, needing to pry it out of his mouth. Okay. Is there anything I can do to help this? I honestly happy with the dog. Other, I'm honestly happy with the dog. Otherwise, just be nice to, that if he would retrieve back. And hand and release it for me. Yeah. So same, same thing we just talked about. Thing. That would be my first course of action. Yep. And if that doesn't get it done, then we would look at something else. But the first thing I would do, same exact thing as the last guy. Yep. yep. I just thought it'd be easier if we. Yep. No, you're right. And it's funny that it's a common. Yeah. Here's two dogs in a row that are like. Oh yeah. I don't want to open my mouth and give so, it to so you. So we got everything. Dogs don't pick them up. Dogs eat them. Dogs bring them back and don't <laughs> want to give them up. And all these little. Nuances are retrieving. Okay, now we're to the miscellaneous. Looks like a pickup stick. It pile is. Of yeah, we just mix them up and grab one, right? So that's an uh, interesting one. All right, let's see. What is this one? I thought I'd send in a question for the podcast. Seven and a half year old, seven and a half year old American Brittany. Yeah, it's given to me a year ago, and up until then, he'd never been hunting, had only been kept as a house pet. I live in the Flint Hills of Kansas and chase bob whites most of the time in big open country with thicker covered draws here and there. I got him with about a month left after the season last year. We got out five times. He does fine working cover at times. Points birds wow, points birds, and have been able to get him to hold his points. But he only gets his nose to the ground occasionally, and that's when he does his best hunting. The majority of the time, he seems to be just having fun running around and will occasionally run through a covey or flush them. Oh, and flush them. Okay. Could, that could be the wind's the wrong way. But um, I'm wondering if there's any exercise that could help to, to get his nose going more. Or if... Wait a minute. I'm wondering if there's any exercise that could, that could help him get his nose going more. Or if it's just a thing I need to get him out on more birds and he'll figure it out. Or do I need to accept the fact that he's going to be that way? His training at this point is just obedience training and does well. Great pet. Uh, but I also wanted a Brittany for hunting. Yeah. So seven and a half years old and he started hunting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but it's it's a Brittany. Yeah. Right? I mean, so they're bored. Yeah, hunt. they got those instincts in right, there. Right. I don't think this guy has a overly deep background in pointing dogs, and I apologize if I'm wrong about that. But the reason I say that is 
you know, his comments about, you know, when the dog puts his nose to the ground and that's when he does his best work, but other times he's just running or sometimes right. runs it. Well, first of all, he lives in wild quail country. He's in the Flint Hills of Kansas, right? Right. right. So, yes, sooner or later, your dog is going to come close enough to some quail to scare him, but he never had a chance to point him. He didn't right. know they were there. Yeah. It's an inadvertent, <laughs> accidental flush. It's going to happen. My guess is he doesn't... You know, that dog's running and he detects a little bit of scent enough to get him to check up and slow down and yep. then go to work. Yeah. And where are they? And then produces birds. Well, this guy is seeing that last little bit right before he finds the birds. And mm-hmm. I, I think he's kind of thinking, if my dog hunted like that all the time, right. he'd really find a bunch right. of them. <laughs> but that's, but he's, that's all starting by the dog covering ground. Right. And he's not going to run with his nose down on the ground, no. sniffing the dirt the whole time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's seeing the last piece of that right before film. he sees the birds he's seen I think. the end of the movie <laughs> right yeah so covering ground is part of it he's going to do that by air scenting he's going to pick up places where the birds were and that that may be that when he's going to low again. headed tracking sure. he's figuring it out he's in a mature dog you right. know but right. um it sounds like the obedience is good he lives yeah. in hunt him hunt him hunt him hunt, hunt, hunt him. him yeah yep. so that dog will be fine yeah that doesn't sound yeah. like a real problem yeah there's it's kind of cool though that that age of a dog. I think it's great. Have you ever seen a that old of a dog get yeah. into hunting late in life? Yep. Yeah, I have. Um, the the he still has the same instincts he had when he was born. Right. They just were never utilized. Right. Now, granted, most dogs would be absolutely, if anything, maybe on the waning end of their prime. Right. 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 You know, he's just getting started, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 He's just a six year old puppy right now. But, <laughs> no, he's not a puppy no, no, mentally. I mean, not you mentally. know, he, he just doesn't have right. any experience. A six-year-old first-timer. Yes, there you there go. You go. There, that's what yeah. I meant to say. Uh, I have a question. May, it may not be a good question. Okay. Uh, if not, I'd still love your take on it. I live in central Alabama and am in the market for my first bird dog. When I finished grad school in June, I grew up with English pointers, but I know this will not be a good breed for me as I will probably be living in an apartment and know how cooped up they can get. I'm looking for a versatile dog, uh, and, and as I am an avid duck hunter and spend 15 to 20 days a year in the marsh each session, each season, uh, between Alabama, and Mississippi, and Arkansas, I'd like to know this guy later, um, and I want a dog that can be an exceptional retriever, and tr- transition right into the upland after duck hunts a few times a year, pointing release birds on our property. I have done research on GSPs and GWPs. I know this is a tall task. That most of it depends on the skill or the trainer. I'd love your or Justin's take on these breeds, as well as the thoughts on other versatile breeds. Wow! So he wants mm-hmm. he wants a really good duck dog that can do really good upland work. Kinda. He's not gonna like my answer. Right? <laughs> no. Sounds like he's already passed a fork in the road that I'm gonna advise he do a U-turn. Yeah. You know when I hear this, yeah. this guy needs a Labrador Retriever. Right. Right. Well, I I don't think there's a better dog for this guy. Right. Okay. Fifteen to twenty plus days in the marsh. Yeah. He needs a duck dog. He needs a lab. No, I right. know. And then, oh yeah, a German short hair puppy is going to be awesome in an apartment, but an English pointer's not. Uh, Come yeah. on. No. You know, there one's got a short tail, or one's got, got a long tail. I've seen him eat apartments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not that a yeah. lab puppy is going to be a right. pain in the neck right. in an apartment, but and then he does. And he even knows he he's had pointers and he wants to go to. Well, I think that's why he's hung up on a pointing dog for upland. Yeah. yeah. Now and he likes. He's doing twenty days in the duck marsh, right. and it says a couple times a year release birds on on his, on his own property. Guess what? You can have a ball hunting them up with your lab as yeah. an upland flusher. Yep. But 20 days in the marsh, a couple times on release birds. Yeah. I don't see that justifying needing right. a pointing dog. Yeah. No. And so I would get a lab. I think yep. that's going to fit his life the best. Mm-hmm. He's probably not going to listen to me. He's probably going to want a pointing dog. Sounds like his heart's set on mm-hmm. that. So I will tell you, here, here's my suggestion yeah. for him. He wants a, what, you know, we talked about that in the last one. What's the description of a versatile dog? It's to me. It's doing work before and after the shot in varied terrains. That's yeah, versatility. Sure. It's not a specialist. Right. So those two breeds, yeah, you're going to be able to find short hairs in every county. And German wire hairs are popular. I would tell them to go look into poodle pointers. That's what I would tell them. You're you're hmm. almost. I'm not saying cold. It doesn't sound like he's doing so much cold weather duck hunting. Well, he's in the in the south. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it get cold down there. You know, sure, cold yeah. dead water. Yeah. You know, get ice once in a while, but okay. 
I, that's a, that's another breed. If he wanted my take on it, he said on thoughts on other versatile breeds, I would say if you're set on it, those are both good dogs. I know people who duck hunt with them, but I don't know people who duck hunting with them that call themselves duck hunters. Mm. You're right. Yeah. Duck hunters usually have a lab. There's a reason for There's that. There's a reason for that. Yeah. Um, if you're going to get a versatile dog, I would tell you one of the breeds I would look at would be um, is the, the Poodle Pointer. And I'd honestly look at a, a Munsterlander, a small Munsterlander. That would be my two choices. There you go. Yeah. All right. I think a little better in the house. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's, and that's going to be a big factor for yeah, this guy. So isn't he say a grad student? He's yeah. Be in an apartment. Kid, yeah, he's yep. probably working in the city somewhere. So that all Usually adds smaller up. and I think a little better control of temperament. Yeah. I'll read this one. It's real mm-hmm. quick. And we kind of missed this in our uh, earlier ones. This should have been in with the range department. Jonathan, huge fan of the podcast. Learned a lot. I have an 11-month-old American, Brittany, who is doing pretty well in the field so far. We've bagged a dozen pheasants in Pennsylvania so far this season. Excellent. I have one issue with him. I was wondering how I can stop him from just running in a straight line while searching a field. How can I teach him to zigzag while searching cover? Mm. Okay. I know why I put this in this pile. So some people seem to be under the impression a pointing dog should work this metronome quartering pattern Mm -hmm. right in front of them. And there are situations where that's a productive pattern for a dog to hunt. Yeah. But a pointing dog should also be using his mind mm-hmm. and his eyes and what he sees in front of him. And if he should hunt objectives that are likely to hold game, right. even if those fall outside of this you know, perfect quartering pattern. That's right. like a flushing dog pattern, right? right. right. These are your, you got to stay within gun range. Well, that's how they... And even flushing dogs hunt objectives within that, right. but we put more constraints range wise because they're that. flushers sometimes yeah. the right move for a pointing dog is to carry a cast in a straight line for a little ways mm-hmm. yeah so this is real obvious on the prairies but some people who haven't hunted with me much and they see it for the first time they go whoa what's going on here yeah when i'm going straight into the wind we're talking short grass prairie mm-hmm. right that dog is very likely to kind of run more of a quartering type pattern with little deviations for terrain right. features and right. stuff. And we're going into the wind, right? Mm-hmm. And then let's just, I'll just grab a number. The dog's average range, 150 yards. Okay. Okay. And we start looping around. Now I got the wind right at my back. Right. That same dog will run in a straight line 400 yards out there or so more. So he can use the and wind. And then he starts coming back to me, right? He's using the wind to yeah. come back. Yeah, yeah. And well, I know once you know what they're doing, you know, a lot of people are uncomfortable. Oh, where's the dog yeah. going? Just relax. He's, he's using yep. the wind. Yep. He's using the terrain. So you need to teach your dog to turn. That way you have a steering wheel on him. We did talk about yep. that earlier. But I, I, that's why I included this in this pile is because he needs to be aware that it's not always going to be this quartering right. type pattern. It right. shouldn't anyways be. Right. That dog needs the freedom to use his brain right. and draw on his past hunting experience mm-hmm. and learn how to play things like right. the wind and the cover. But that handling is always there when you need it. Right. Yeah. Yep. So... Okay, that's Got that. that one. Grab one. Oh, there. There's pulling right out of the Just like a magician. Pile. Here's a stack of cards. Long time listener. Love the podcast. Have a question for Justin. I have a four year old Brittany, one of the one of the best dogs I've ever pheasant hunted behind. That's great. Excellent. Problem is in the grouse woods, she keeps pushing birds so they flush too soon. And she never gets a solid point. Is this just more contact with grouse, or is there some form of training I can do to not get her to push a bird? Mm. So I'm assuming when it says one of the best pheasant dogs, it's a point. It, it points pheasants. Yeah, the dog so, successfully hunt pheasants right, with it, and right. at four, if the dog has had equal opportunity to show itself in the woods, in the woods, he probably has a dog that just doesn't have the right knack. Now, a lot of times, a really good pheasant dog, mm-hmm. see that pheasant would. Much rather play the game from the ground Mm -hmm. and continue to run and elude danger. And a good pheasant dog knows when to push them and when to back off and trail them. And and a pheasant is far more likely to continue to play that from the ground, whereas a grouse is going to go, That's enough of this, I'm out of here. (laughs) You know, that little too much pressure from the dog and he's gone. If the dog has had enough practice on grouse and is still not getting any pointed, then the dog may just not have the right stuff to be a grouse dog. It that, really can't. And that's the truth of things, right? You've seen it how oh, many... Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the lake states... Every dog can't... Even if you live no, in grouse country, no, no, every no. dog can't be a good grouse dog. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And I'm not talking about 
the western, you know, mountain dumb dumb rough right. grouse, or right. the far northern Canada dummies. You can yeah. throw rocks at. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the where they get hunted. Where they get hunted, and they're super skittish and spooky. Yeah, it, it, it does take a special, <coughs> excuse me, special dog. Yeah, to pull that off. Yeah, so yeah, that's just gonna be. <coughs> at four, be. yeah, I wouldn't have a lot of hope. Right. Um, question for Justin: One year, one year old Brittany, first season hunting wild pheasants here in Minnesota. He's doing well so far, holding steady points on strong scent. Still figuring out the running bird thing, but he'll get that with experience. Uh, my question is, I wanted to have him using a beeper collar, not a consistent one, but one that beeps only when he goes on point. I've held off on getting this collar, but I'm wondering, is it too late? I would think once he's super confident with his points, adding a beeper won't be a problem to it. Just wanted to get your thoughts on going forward with other pointing dogs I own. This is my first. When is the right time to introduce this people? You, I remember you told me about that when I had Zara. Yeah. I said, you know, you got Some dogs you should always introduce that beeper. Sure. So it's not. Most a, of them you should. So right. Yeah. So it's right. not new. And yeah. so, um, no, it's not too late to answer that. A yeah. uh, good way to do it. You don't want the first time to be on birds or hunting. Right. Um, you can do it around home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought kind of everybody knew this, but a quick review. Those things are made for outside, so if you have them on your dog in your house, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, this thing is insanely loud. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. Bounces right off the walls. Yeah. Yeah. So take some tape and cover that speaker maybe three-quarters of the way. Just get some. Just to dull it down, muffle it up, muffle it up yep. dull it down a little bit. Yep. When you are going to go to town... Mm-hmm. Okay, have your dog in a crate if he's normally crated, or yep. if he's not, go ahead and have it anywhere. If your dog's loose, that's fine too. And just have it be in the same room as the dog going the whole time you go to the grocery store and come home. Okay, and that's the first time. So he just hears it in his house. All right. So new. is it going off on point mode? It will be, yeah. Or yeah. whenever he stops and lays down? It's no, it's not on the dog. It's just in the same room. Oh, it's just, ah. Yeah, yeah. So he can leave it. He can come back so to it. First of all, but he's it's hearing in a, that noise. He's just hearing it, and it's an environment that he's comfortable and confident right. in. So it's just there in yeah. the same room. Then the next time, if he's in a crate, maybe I'll set it right on top of the crate gotcha. while you're gone for an hour or two. Mm-hmm. And then he wears it loose mm-hmm. in the house, the boot. I'll do it right here with the dogs in the kennels. I'm trying yeah. to give advice for people with a house dog. Right, right, right. Um, and, you know, I've even had dogs, I introduce it to them here around the kennels, and it'll you'll hear that beep, beep, point signal. I'll go back there and the dog's sleeping. He he just, just, he's got it on and he's sleeping. He right? sleeping That's when you know it's 100% neutral. <laughs> and now it is not going to influence his points because these dogs that don't go into hunting and pointing with that beeper truly neutralized mm-hmm. That can get them to move on point when they normally would not have. Right. Yeah. Well, picture, who you know, the, like yeah. you said, the noise of a garbage truck backing up. Yeah. If you're sitting in your car and you hear that noise, you think you're in an accident. It could be, yeah. Well, I mean, it's so just, this dog, to, to hear that while he's smelling a bird. For the first time, time yeah. Would be really detrimental. Of course it's going to be so unsettling. Just, he could just yeah. work it into it. Yeah. yeah. This is a real easy, quick one, so All let's right. answer that, guys. I'll be bringing a new puppy into the home. Uh, my first hunting dog, Llewellyn Setter. Our first dog is a neutered male lap dog, a uh, little 10-pounder. What is the best way for me to introduce a new puppy to the house and avoid any timidness or challenges with a new male in a household? Best way to introduce, you got an older dog, little teeny one, and the best way for him to introduce his Llewellyn Setter puppy. What do you think, Justin? Piece of cake. Just bring it home. Just... Absolutely. So... The adult dog, regardless of how many pounds it weighs, he says it's like a little 10-pounder, right? right? Yeah. Um, the the new eight-week-old puppy is automatically going to be submissive to the established adult dog in the yeah. house. So the only time I would have concerns is if you have an adult dog in your house and you're bringing home another strange adult dog. Yeah. Now you have potential conflict there and yeah. a, a fight for hierarchy or dominance in the house. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've never seen a dog, and even somewhere I told the owner, I don't know about that one. You might want to be really careful. I've never had one kill another puppy, right? right. They, there might be some posturing, and I'm the boss. The world, uh, sure. <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, that puppy is automatically going to be submissive. That yeah, puppy doesn't know you. anything other than just left its I, I litter gotta, mates I, and its home, and that's a new in. home. I got to fit in, and they'll yeah. sort it out as they grow up. Yeah. So that guy has no worries. Okay, bring it home. Easy enough. 
Um, I want to. I want you to read that one. Okay. I love that question. I have a four-year-old German wire pointer that is force-fetched. Steady to wing shot and fall. She is a big, big running dog. 750 yards if I let her. Wow. This guy must live out in <clears throat> Wyoming. I'm getting a second German wire hair pointer this year. Not sure of the sex yet. And I'm kind of nervous for how it's going to go. I hunt chucker mainly, leaving one dog in the truck while I hunt another isn't an option. I think it's always an option, but no. maybe not where he lives and no. where he's hunting. Um I don't have the legs to make the chucker climb multiple times a day. You already know. That's why you... Yeah, okay. I read this one. So what are the things I can do to help make the first year beneficial? Will puppies usually follow an older dog? Because I obviously don't want a puppy ranging super far. I was taught to force fetch first because it helps eliminate problems with dogs mouthing birds, creating a bad habit after the shot when steadying them up. But I'm thinking steadying first so pup won't blow... Older dog's points. He's thinking hard. Uh, really, any advice you can give me on a newbie dog guy on how two dogs work together would be great. Boy. Mm-hmm. I have an idea, but I'd like to hear yours. Well, I mean, I when I read that question, yeah. I got to the end of it, and uh, all of a sudden I was like, I had just this huge smile on my face. Because this guy, thank you for sending this in. I just went like on this full trip down memory lane of chasing (laughs) chuckers in eastern Oregon. You've done that. In Idaho, yeah. So when he says, look, man, this is a a one-way hunt. There ain't no going back and switching dogs. (laughs) Been there, done that. I love it. I can appreciate that kind of hunting. It's an adventure hunt. Yeah. And once you're in there, you're in there for the duration. Right. That's your hunt. That's your day. That's your day. And, and it's such a cool experience. And so this guy really helped me kind of relive some of that. Yeah. It was fun. And I got to thinking about all Did you hunt two dogs in time? Stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 And so I did a little bit of a couple different things. Sometimes I would uh, tag team them. So I'd actually have one on lead at heel mm-hmm. while the other one was hunting. And I'd flip-flop them about every 45 minutes to an hour. Oh. And that was primarily for a couple of reasons. A lot of times, by the time I got from where you could park... To where really some of the sweet stuff was. If you let them hunt all the way from the truck, they were getting pretty tired by the time you were there. That far of a walk. Yeah. Right? Mile or two? And, and trying to get, yeah, easy and nasty. You know, I'm mean, nasty <laughs> country. Runners. Oh, it's awesome. And um, <clears throat> It's awesome. <laughs> but it's a real adventure bird hunt. Some of that yeah. country is just, just great. Yeah. You know, you got it to yourself, and it's a great game bird for people mm-hmm. Who only know the Penrase version? That is not <coughs> at all what we're talking about no. here. No, it's a fantastic game bird. So, to this guy's more dog and training related questions, um, yeah, I wouldn't be so hung up on force breaking this pup. We don't know what we do or don't have. Right. I would go out of my way every now, maybe when your older dog needs an off day, take your pup out solo. I want your pup to have at least a little bit of solo experience yeah. hunting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And then I'd throw them out there together and just see. You'd be surprised. A lot of times, those dogs are well-bred dogs. You'd be surprised how quick that pup might start honoring your older dog. Yeah. And you're then, now we might have some beneficial stuff going on. You know, right. he's kind of thinking about training to prevent worst-case scenario, right. the pup running in and putting the birds up. He might do that a few times. Right. That's okay. He's learning, Right. right. But I've seen it before. I mean, half a dozen hunts, and you got a puppy starts backing. Right. And uh, okay, now we got bonus. uh, Yep. Now we got a little teamwork going between the two, and so uh, don't try and train. And I think you know he talked about force breaking a puppy to prevent mishandling shot birds. Right. Well, let's not train to prevent problems that don't actually exist yet. Yeah. It's like buying new cars for your tires for your truck when you still got. 50,000 miles. Uh, gee, left well, out. you don't know if you got a problem. Pro- this know. guy doesn't know. And yeah. so start, get get that dog introduced. Priority is introduced to the gun or whatever yeah. his deal yeah. is. You know, yeah. make sure you got all your bases covered to hunt this pup. Yeah. Sometime by himself, see how it unfolds. Right. Um, if anything, you know, if you are having any interference issues, okay, we want a good come when called, a good heal, and a good woe. Yeah, and, because if you're seeing something that you want to stop, and you can go back to what you said, you could put one on a Jaeger lead. Yeah, whatever you want. How long does it take you when you're when you're hunting like that? Like, because I, I 
I'm picturing, okay, you got two high-powered dogs. Uh, yeah. you know, I shouldn't even say high-powered, but, you know, go chuck and hunt. they got to have more power than you. It's tough hunting. Well, they got four legs. Yeah. That's their advantage. We only got two. <laughs> it, like, it has a multiplier of six. <laughs> but, okay, so you got a dog on a, on a lead, right? And you're carrying a shotgun. How long is it going to take for that guy or you to get that dog to understand that I am just walking with him and I'm not pulling you down the aisle while the other dog's hunting? Well, they need to know heel first before you try and enforce heel while you're hunting. Right. You train that around the house, around the neighborhood, or whatever you're... And then you can even train that in the yard with the dog loose and dog on your head. As you go, you know. My average chucker hunts were like four hours, so you got four hours to teach that dog to heal. I like to think you get that done. (laughs) Right. Pinch so, collar help for that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For certain dogs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you you know, you do your foundation work. Right, right. That shouldn't be the first time you don't try teach and it heal healing the first dog. day, but yeah. Moms, but yeah. So it is doable. I never even thought of that. Just yeah, no, we do it all one the time. Dog on a lead. I got some hunts in Montana that are so long of a walk. That one dog can't do it. Right. Or shoot can't do it well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he can I'm not gonna have to carry him out, right? right. But that last hour right. probably ain't doing great work. Right. Fresh dogs tired. do better. They're tired. Yeah. They're fresh yep. dogs. So stay at it. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, tell that guy. I want to tell him. What's his name? Oh, where was it? Uh, Forrest. All right. Thanks, Forrest. Yeah. If, if you have so many chuckers where you're hunting this coming season that you feel like they're in danger, if it's a, <laughs> right. a being overtaken by chuckers, get a hold of me and I'll yeah. come out there. We'll <laughs> do some dog training together. I miss it. I miss it a lot. Um, what do we got here? Here's a different one. Was, I thought that was a different one. 750 yards. I can all yeah. That's I can see it though. It, he said if I let her. So right, you right. know, but yeah. that's the kind of motor yeah. that dog has. Yeah, buddy. I have a question for the upcoming Justin. See, we're just gonna call them the Justin Crail podcast. Um, I have a two-year-old, <laughs> two-year-old lab coonhound mix, and she's just basic obedience hunting training. I live in the Twin Cities. Living in the cities, obviously finding space to run, train my dog can be an issue sometimes. So I was wondering if I had any tips or tricks to keep up with training in a city environment. Wow. Thanks in advance. Hmm. We primarily add, oh, forgot to add, we primarily hunt pheasants. Mm -hmm. He's got a lab coonhound mix. Lives in the city. How should he exercise it, basically, is what he's asking, right? I don't know. What training? I, well, training, yeah. I kind of like to see stuck in some big city. Isn't it like Minneapolis or something? Yeah, Minneapolis. Yeah. Twin yeah. Cities. And he's got a lab coon hound, yeah. right? But he's still a bird hunter. Mm-hmm. God bless him. Yeah. You yeah. know? So I had to rack my brain on Tra- this yeah, one yeah, going... Training in the city and Well, you see, I've never lived in a big city. <laughs> mm, Nor do you not, like them. <laughs> I've, n- I've never had a lab coon hound, right? <laughs> I have run pheasants. Uh, okay, so what can we do here? The only thing I could come up with is he could use the distraction of city this, stimulus, yeah. a park or whatever, yeah. to strengthen some of the basic off-leash command, graduating to off-leash right. stuff, starting, with, leash, starting right. with long leash, check cord stuff, yep. to include tempting and distracting situations. And that could benefit him as he hunts with mm-hmm. this dog. Just a higher level of obedience yeah. and control. Yeah. And even though the enticing stimulus is non-hunting and non-bird and right. non-shooting related, just finding things that are very tempting right. to the dog and enforcing some sort of obedience or response to commands in that situation right. is going to have some carryover. He's putting, into of, the, he's putting a layer into it that... Yeah. Maybe nobody else would get, and it might help him later. Yeah, yeah. and you hang out like behind the restaurants and dumpsters. He's a half coon hound, right? right. So you get him into some raccoons. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know what to tell him. Yeah, guy. he didn't say he'd never hunt a raccoon with it. He just said primarily pheasants. <laughs> well, I was just thinking it might tempt the dog, and you practice come when yeah. called after he chases the coons away from some dumpsters. You know, you made me like that guy made you think about shark hunting. My friend uh, Mike in Harrisonburg, Virginia. He ta- he he has two French Britain. He lives right in the city right by the college, and he takes his two dogs, walk every morning, and I don't know, I don't suggest doing it, but he, of course, there's, when I say early, he's a crack of dawn early guy, but he'll get out to this park, and he'll, and he always has collars with him, mm-hmm. but he has got his dogs, like when he gets to the park, he's gotten to the point where they're off lead, and he's doing some just little drills, Yeah, and come when called on one of them. Yeah, and he got the other one, and he's doing that in a in a park yeah. right in the city. I didn't Absolutely, even gave that any thought. Yeah, 
Yeah. You, you work with what you got yeah. at, at hand. And so I commend the guy for yeah. doing that. Um, <clears throat> well, read that here. one. All right. We're getting there. Uh, Chris from PA. Uh, I have two female German short hair pointers. My first hunting dogs and first time training, handling, etc. 18 month old Storm. <laughs> Well, I love these names. Storm and Chaos. Ooh, so let's Chaos is eight months old. Sergeant Storm and Commander Chaos. <laughs> eighteen month old Storm, eight month old Chaos. Okay. Storm has received a prize two natural Billy NA. It's a good good score, good a good qualification. Um, early this year and we'll be moving up to UT next year, okay? She knows her standard commands will come sit stay and has also basically stayed the wing shot. Fall. He's doing better than I am. I'm using a Garmin 550 Pro for knee collar. He, uh, she, and I believe for the most part. Wait a minute. This this one thing typos I can't get through. Justin, let me see. I, think I use a Garmin 550. Read. You know, what did, yeah, what did you, you you pre-read these? I did. Okay, I'll take it. Take and it believes there. most part understands it. I can use just. Tone, that's a typo oh, from your buddy. Oh, tone. Tone oh, okay. for recall, 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. 1% of the time, she needs a low three reminder. Work them on birds, pigeons, and chuckers one or two times a month. I like that. He's not overdoing it. Mm -hmm. When I take her hunting on state game land that is stocked with pheasants, if she doesn't get on the scent of a bird, and she starts to hunt mice during her search. Hmm. When you watch her, you can tell what she's on by her body and point. Um, while she's running, if she encounters a mouse scent, she flash points for a second, then bounces the mouse and wants to dig or whatever to get it. She can then travel 10 feet further, then truly point a bird and stay steady without command. Yeah. Right. That's, that's different. Yeah, no, it's no biggie. Is this mouse thing something she'll outgrow with one or more years on birds, or do I need to do something? I've read about trash baking and all. I have two or three times. Turn the collar up. One level to four, and uh, when she would go after the mouse, give her a hit and say, leave it. But I stopped because you can't always catch her in the tall grass doing this, so I right. feel if I continued, she might only be corrected half the time. This is also only an issue in some types of fields, I noticed. Yeah, the fields that have mice in mm -hmm. We need more hawks. <laughs> no questions about chaos at this time. Okay. okay. Thank you for your help. All right. So, so that's not what we would call a mousing dog, though. Like when we what? call mouse. Well, I mean, you never see a dog that they're not really maybe doing mice. They're just not real enthusiastic about hunting. They're no, just this like, is a mouse and dog. I read, you, the way you I call read. this. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean it's pointing and pouncing on him and trying yeah. to dig at him and everything. Okay. And so he's a little frustrated because he's in his training field and, and like, he's he, got his pigeons or his birds out yeah. and the dog's finding these mice and dinking around and so yeah. she uh, she's bored for lack of a better thing. This is same old, same old, mm -hmm. right? You know, okay, it's a training field. She will outgrow this. Yeah. She absolutely will outgrow this. Um, I don't know if this guy... Where does it say where he's at? PA. I think it was Pennsylvania. Right, so if this guy's going to do like other... He's not going to see this if he goes grouse hunting. He's not going to see this if he goes to South Dakota. Yeah. And his dog... Fast forward. His dog's three years right. old and everything. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I had a dog do that chipmunk hunting a lot. Grouse okay. hunting. Yeah. I'll tell you about... Uh, I mean, constantly, if they would even hear the little chirp, chirp, chirp of a sure. chipmunk. Sure. Break off of what it was doing and go to that tree. And I, it was frustrating me, and it went away. A friend of mine has a little female black and white pointer, right? And I did some work with a dog when she was a puppy. Sent her on my winter trip at, like, one year old. This dog was the trashiest thing you ever seen. I mean, mouse, pack rat, chipmunk, ground squirrels, rabbits. I mean, it doesn't matter what it was. She, she, you know, mess with them, point them, jump yeah. in, digging at them and everything. Mm -hmm. And... It was driving him crazy to the point where he mentioned a couple of times, I'm thinking about, you know, getting rid, getting rid of this dog. Yeah. It's driving me nuts. And uh, I don't think he actually would have done it, he's, but he was talking like it. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, I wouldn't. I said, there's a lot to like about this dog. I said, just hang tight. Yeah. Fast forward, this dog's like four years old right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you'll see this dog. Really? Holy smokes. She's a puppy. That's all she was. She, yeah. oh, that smells good. I can't help it. And as time went on, she became more focused on, no, we are here for and only for right. birds 
You right. know what I mean? And so this is still a young dog. It's going to be fine. Don't sit there busting her chops, you know, left and right in your right. little training. Feel it'll go away on its own. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. What about, the, uh, just a quick sidebar on that, the the puppies that chase the butterflies in the fields, that usually goes away. They'll too, grow, yep, they'll That's... outgrow it. Yep, they'll outgrow that. And then, so there, here's another kind of trashy question. Easy, easy, quick, trashy uh, question. I believe you're looking for listener questions. Uh, do you have any tips on aversion training for porcupines, skunks, and snakes? I was able to train my GSP to ignore rabbits because we encounter them frequently, but I have had both my dogs get a full face of porcupine quills this fall. Any help will be good. Also, removing quills. I can answer the quill. I just heard that. Get them out quick. As soon as it happens, don't let them stay in there. Um, and pull them straight out. Anyway. I can give you some more detail yeah, on that and later. Yeah, you don't cut them. That's don't cut them. They don't you pop out. Grab them and you get, keep a hemostat or keep a Leatherman in your pouch all the time. Yeah. Get all the ones you can as quick as you can. Uh, yeah. My young dog now tucks tail and runs when he sees pliers. Oh, yeah. criminy! <laughs> Tough cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, what about rabbit or uh, porcupine, snake, and yeah? Let the e collar be the bad guy. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Silence, no command. Collar up high level. Those yep. things sting. A little tough love for their own good. Mm-hmm. Take any opportunity you have to set them up. Otherwise, it's just sooner or later going to happen on the fly as you hunt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you can set them up, great. If not, now you could set it up with a por- it's a little hard to do with a skunk. But it is. Yeah. Really you can, you can get a dead porcupine off the side of the road. You can get a dead I've heard one. Of people doing that. Oh, I've done it. And you know? but live ones are a little better. They're a little oh, more yeah. tempting and enticing. Yeah. But a dead one's a start. And same thing with snakes. You know, just. And if you live in snake country, there are trainers that do snake breaking right. classes. Go ahead. Definitely and do worth it. it. Sure. Yep. Sure. Boy, this yeah, a that one doesn't really one-liner. fit. Yeah. All right. Let me oh, see. I can. Break. I have a thirty-week-old. Thirty-week-old is how many months? Quick! I got to do math. So, <laughs> well, fifty-two this, weeks in a year. I, well, <laughs> have you ever heard of anyone when you say how old's your dog? Thirty months. Yeah. Thirty weeks. He's, no, he's, I haven't. <laughs> I've heard it like the sixteen weeks. So. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so 30, yeah, I'll do that for you. Seven and a half months. Thank you. Okay. Seven and a half months. I have a okay. seven and a half. Seven I wonder how far he's going to go with that. Uh, I don't know. There's I've heard like, people say, like with kids, they're like, "Oh, how old is your daughter?" Um, twenty six months. I've over heard it two, with kids. Over no. two. <laughs> over two. Wow. I've heard him say that with with kids, not right. with dogs. Back to his question. Um, all right. So I got a seven and a half month hold. Yellow Lab female. Want a trainer to be a duck dog. What is the best video or trainer to train her? So I thought I'd include that one. Yeah. I don't keep up with the duck videos because I'm, up up, I'm an upland guy. Right, right. right. But um, in his search for a trainer, he wants to find a guy who hunts a lot of ducks. Right. It, it might sound like a you know Obvious. smart aleck answer, yeah, yeah. but you'd be surprised how many trainers out there maybe don't hunt a lot. Right. And so to really have a real, at least at some point in their lives, they should have. Maybe yeah. they can't get at it like they used to because they're working, they're busy, you know. Right, right. Um, but those are the guys that have a grip on exactly what you need. Right. So you want to find somebody who trains for the kind of hunting that you do. Right. It doesn't do you any good to send you to be a very talented trainer at something else. Right. But that's not their thing. Right. So that's my advice to that. Yeah. Guy. Yep. Wow, we're almost there. We're getting there. All right. Nine, I have a nine-month-old wire hair pointing Griffon. Recall and woe is pretty good. Tends to creep when she sees a bird. When I shoot bird for her, she recovers them. Bit tends to mouth them and drop them. Do I force fetch her? And also, any advice on steady to shot at this age? What do you see? Let me read that again. Nine month old Griffin. First of all, nine month old is young. Mm-hmm. We, we got to keep reiterating that. Yeah. You know, don't put too much stuff on him. Um, pretty good. Tends to creep when she sees a bird. When she sees a bird. Yeah. Well, that's different than pointing a bird. I mean, no, no, he's no well, creeping is moving slowly while it is pointing. Yeah, but yeah. I, I guess I'm reading more into it. Yeah, um, pretty good on recall and whoa, is pretty good. Tends to creep when she sees a bird. Yeah. To me, that's saying she's sight sighting a bird. That's a pen raised bird walking okay. around in All front right. of her. Seen it. Yeah. Okay, that's well, then, my guess. Yeah, okay, hey, we'll take it that yeah. way. Um, when I shoot a bird for her, she recovers them. Tends to be a bit hard. Boy. 
recovers them, <laughs> then bit tends to mouth them and drop them. Do I force fetch her or any advice on steady to... Boy, that's two string things. <laughs> any advice on steady to shot with this age? Yeah. So wow. I had to include this. This yeah. is so indicative of so many people. This dog is nine months old. It's pointing birds. You're shooting birds over yeah. him. It's recovering those birds. But he's mouthing them a little. So yeah. what? Yeah. You have a Let puppy it. you're successfully killing birds over. Yeah. And all this other stuff, that perfect delivery, yeah. that steadiness to the shot... You don't go from nine month old to that. This yeah. is a journey right. that you know we got to put some fundamental building right. blocks in place. Yeah, a lot, there's a lot more experience that needs to come right. into play, and a dog needs to have all these things trained and experienced. Life experience is yeah. a big component. Yeah. This is not all a man made deal. Otherwise, we could pluck a dog out of the shelter <laughs> and just right. teach them everything they right. need to know. There's right. all these instincts that need to be developed. Yeah, and. Uh, so this guy in his head is way ahead of the count yeah. of, of where this dog is. Right. It sounds like he's got a great dog. Totally normal for a nine month old yeah. to creep on point nine a little months. bit. Yeah. Totally normal for him not to have this, you know, polished delivery again. Right. So he does not have a problem. Right. He has a great puppy. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll be and fine. Then, uh, yeah, he'll be fine. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Young, 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 young. I'm gonna grab a little swallow of coffee. Oh, we'll you that. raid that All one. Right. I've I'll get it. this one warmed up here, just like your here. coffee. I have a 10-month-old yellow lab. She is learning fast and extremely food-motivated. Well, so is my daughter Kelsey's lab. Um, so is the corgis. And so is, yeah. Uh, she is an angel whenever you have a handful of kibble. Comes on command, heals very well, will sit and stay. However, if you don't have any treats, all bets are off. <laughs> Sometimes she'll listen. But it's a crapshoot. How do I get... That treat my hand obedience all the time. Do I do have a training collar for her. She does really well when that's on her too. But again, if the collar's off, no guarantees. No guarantees without treats. No guarantees without a collar. Well, a non-food motivated lab is sick. I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this is wrong. Yeah. This is a, now, I can just picture this guy. that He's got a pocket full of treats and they totally got the dog's attention. Yeah. Right? What do you want me to do? See it? Yeah. Saying he's probably got a little routine he can put the dog through and yep. it does whatever. But no yep. treats, no go. Right. He talked about an e-collar, you know. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. do, it does okay good with the e-collar too. But Kinda, it, Yeah. So it's a super secret dog training tool called a leash. That's the more thing he... I didn't hear anything about that. No. No. Not a lead or a leash. A leash. Right. Yeah. And so... No treats. Wean this dog off treats. No right. more, you know, bread. And I use treats for puppies for certain things. Come right. when called primary. It's a great thing. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you know, wasn't it 10 months old, I yeah, think? Yeah, months. okay, you should be done with that. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and do on-leash obedience. And then, then you go through a phase where the leash is on the dog, but he's just dragging the leash. Right. So it's there. You can get a hold of it if right. needed. But the dog right. needs to learn that this is something it has to do. Because you are asking it to do it and do it right now. Yep. And it's something that you can and will reinforce right. if the dog doesn't do it. Right. So treats are no longer a thing of the picture. Okay. The leash allows you to control the dog. Yep. Without knowing the dog's foundation, uh, I'm hesitant to say how to or not to apply the e-collar. Because that is such it's another different, yeah, with every dog and every person. But that but, leash, you can do that in a house. You can be in a house like that. Absolutely. Dogs I, over there. I raise all my dogs in the house when they're puppies, and then some of them start to stay in the kennel as right. they get a little bit older. Right. They all drag leads around the house, so I have some. I can't expect them. So they're them. sitting over there, and you yeah. say, "Come, I got something you I got can it. get a hold of." Yeah. Give a little pet on the head, tell them they're a good dog. Yep. Yeah. So more leash work, and then dragging the leash. You got something to get a hold of, and you will get that dog's response just like you do with the treats. All right. This guy lives in another destination location. Where is Pier, he? Pierre, South Dakota. Yeah, you corrected yourself. You want to be ID'd as a tourist. You call it Pierre. <laughs> yeah, you say Pierre like you ain't hunting here. Pierre. Uh, Pierre, South Dakota. Well, this is what he... I'm glad he wrote early. Nine-week-old wire-haired pointing Griffon. So he just got it. Yeah. Okay. We're working on... Let me on guess. It's not retrieving. <laughs> Please, I didn't I'm get sorry. that far yet. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> We're working on potty training. Good. Basic Good. obedience command so far. Doing really well. Um, I plan on getting him introduced to hobbled pigeons this week. 
this week. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't too do it. Late. It's too late, though, right? He already did yeah, it, didn't he? This probably came ah. out two weeks ago. All right. We'll be doing quite a bit of pheasant, sharp tail, and prairie chicken hunting next season. Well, that's nice. a nice thing. He okay. lives in the right place. Right. Yeah. My question is, I grew up hunting with flushers, primarily labs. This is my first pointing dog. What would be the biggest difference in training a flusher or a pointer? Or maybe a better question is, what is points should I make sure he hits and avoids? Any tips would be help. All right, what is the transition for a guy that went from flushers to pointers for him? Yeah, well, he needs to, you know, as this dog gets older, become comfortable for the, with the dog going out a little further. And I think you right. picked a good pointing breed to make that transition. Yeah. You know, usually not, I, I, usually not super rangy dogs. Yep. Um, I think pretty highly of that breed. They got mm-hmm. good instincts as yep. a whole. Mm-hmm. And um, so his his training for the dog's handling should come pretty easy. Those dogs are pretty strong in retrieving instinct. Yep. He needs to understand that, you know, developing that search is really important. Um, I have hunted where this guy lives. Yeah. And so he need, range can be your ally in those prairie countries. But right. then you may want that dog you're going to drop into some little slough at a different place right. or even later on the same hike. We're going to check for some pheasants down there. Mm-hmm. And and that's the kind of dog that can maybe, you know, stretch out Do when needed and then shorten up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. You know, my dogs are good on the chickens and sharp tails out there and when i see cattails i do a u-turn and i'm putting one of my dogs down there no but this is the kind of dog that might sleuth the edge of that and, yeah. and work some roosters yeah. for him so he just needs to give he'll give this dog especially as a puppy a little more freedom than okay. he would a flusher than he would the flusher yeah 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 and can we tell him to if he already has got it in front of pigeons at 10 weeks of age just stop the, it it's not it's necessary. too young no puppy walks right yeah, puppy walks, puppy socialization, walks. crate training, right. house breaking, and was, you don't have to train this dog to like birds. This dog's gonna like. This dog's birds. gonna like birds, right? And putting dogs on live birds at nine weeks old is all risk and no reward, or ten, there you or go. something, That's or a it good is. Point. Yeah, you know the dog could come through it just fine, right. or whatever. But you know, he get whipped in the eye with a wingtip, or maybe he's just yeah. scared of that boogie. It's just that's to me is too young. Right. Yeah. He doesn't have to shoot over it. He's got probably as long as the snow's off the ground. Yeah. Take this puppy walking. Yeah. Walking in bird country. Yeah. And yep. if he wants me to look at it firsthand, I can swing through there. Uh, I haven't been there in two years. Two years ago, I was three, right. year, three years ago, I was there. And again, if he's got too many chickens. Uh, yeah, let us know how the chickens. Yeah, right back and let us know how the chickens yeah. and sharpies are out there. Yeah, next year. So, all right, what do we got here? We're getting there, buddy. Let's We're getting there. A couple little two liners here. Well, let's see what that one says. All right. Uh,. Question for Justin and Ron. Guys, I'm going to be a first-time bird dog hunter new to grouse hunting. My pup should be about 10 months old at the beginning of his first season next year. That's a nice age for a first season. He will be a Llewellyn setter. I'm living in North Carolina, and I'm very afraid that our dismal wild bird populations will hurt this development. We all know birds teach dogs. What is the best way for me to get him ready for his first season using pigeons or pen-raised quail, etc.? Should I travel five to ten hours to get him on some wild grouse in the off season? Ooh, that's so. Um, unless you have a really good no, spot. <laughs> well, it's hard. He's an owner of one dog. You know, right. that's a tremendous amount of travel. Yeah. To go, you know, you can only work one dog so much, right? right? And so to do all that travel for a couple mornings or yeah. something, that's pretty tough to justify. Yeah. Save your time off work. Um, uh, you know, for the season, a- and he would think. You know, I'd like this guy to think introduction to birds, natural environment. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? An area preceded. We talked about this, I think, earlier with some of the questions. Really good, strong flying game birds. You, you can mm-hmm. get good quail. Yeah. What state's he in again? North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some quail growers, and you know, somewhere around there. Yep. And if you get some bad ones. You're done with that grower. You get yep. some other ones. Eat those use birds. Eat them, whatever. Yeah. Yep. And um, 
in in a natural environment and mm-hmm. just develop that puppy's instincts there. But that's a long haul for me to say. I hey man, I appreciate. I can admire the dedication. Yeah, yeah. This guy's kind of like it's sounds like, like he might willing. be willing to do yeah, it. He says, "Should I? Yeah, Should I? Yeah." You know, if you said yes, he'd probably go. Oh, Justin yeah. told me I got to travel. Or you know, hey, if he, it's yeah. di- I feel it's different if he's got a four day weekend and a buddy who's got a dog and they throw some fishing rods in the truck right. and there's some tents or that's not gonna hurt anything. That's not gonna hurt anything besides being a good trip. Yeah, but to drive <laughs> five hours to run a dog. For and then to hope you're finding and, and then hope birds. you find a bird and it's right. August and it's right. hot or whatever. Save your time off and you're traveling for the season. I mean, you start off, and to just, be clear, you start off your young dogs here that you're fully intent on being grouse dogs. Almost all your dogs are grouse dogs. Right? Oh, they all are. I mean, every, almost every one, I mean, one of every them. Every one of them. I mean, yeah. and I mean a Michigan rough grouse dog. Yeah, that's their home and, bird. And they're grouse dogs on the prairie and they're, they're quail birds in Arizona. Birds. Yeah. Okay. You start your dogs on quail, right? No, I start my. What my dogs are started on depends on when they were born. Well, okay, you know what I mean. If yeah. if you were in that situation where you if could, I was in his situation, I would you start them on quail. Yeah, you'd have no problem starting. No on problem quail. starting. Just, I just strong sure birds, good strong flying, flying birds. birds, and not some contrived no launcher, no none of that. But just they're there to be found. Right. And when I look at a piece of land, I go. If there were wild birds here, mm-hmm. where would they be? Yeah. And that's where I'm going to make sure those birds end up. Because right. we also, it's, along with the bird contact, I also want to be developing that dog's instincts of where he's likely to find game. Right, right. These dogs are learning to become a predator. Right. Right? And so to develop that instinct in them, yeah. you know, all those little things are important. Yeah. 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 So. Got it. That's the deal with him. Um we're gonna make this guy wait. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. Oh, there's a easy one. Yeah, it's a Somewhere. hard mouth retrieving one oh. there. We were. I thought we, we were we, done with that. All right, seven month old, seven month old poodle pointer. I, I'm, I'm saying these because with the inflection to like everybody remember, we seem to have a lot of these dogs that people are worrying about that they may not have to worry about because no. they're so young. Yeah. Seven-month-old poodle pointer doing well in obedience training has been introduced to planted birds. However, when working on retrieves, he is very possessive and concerning me that he would begin to he would begin to develop hard mouth, judging by the way he's handling his bumpers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? See what happens. Just Again, do he doesn't get bumpers? Right. And nobody has with birds yet. Right, right. And you know, let that dog, as he starts to hunt him, you know, let him drag a little lightweight cord so he can get a hold of him and yep. let him grow up a little bit, kill some birds for him and right. see what he has. But, you know, even when I raise a dog, there'll be something along the line I'll worry about. It's human nature. Yeah. That's what a lot of these are from. The guys are sometimes going, uh-oh, you know, he's yeah. kind of popping on this canvas dummy here. Yeah, I can yeah. hear teeth on there. Right. Is he going to just... We don't know yet. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Don't don't get too don't, quick to react to yeah. something that hasn't... Don't try to fix a problem that may not be there. there. Yeah. Alright, what do you got? You're going to like this one. No oh boy. Alright, 14-month-old English set, oh, English pointer. 100% LU breeding. I live in Ohio. I hunt and, and hunt pen-raised birds. I've done zero training with this dog besides teaching woe as a puppy for basically making him want to sit and wait and eat and leave his crate coming in and out of the house. Those are all good things. Mm -hmm. Um, I took him out for the first time in October. He slammed on every bird, held point until the bird was in the air, and brought back every bird to hand. (laughs) How, How often will a dog be just this good? My next goal is to steady him up until the shot. What is the best way to do this? That I will not take any drive out and fun out of the hunt out of him. Wow. Mm-hmm. See, I don't think he's going to take anything out of that dog. It's well, he that depends good. on what he does. So, well, unless he. So the cool thing about the podcast, not like a radio show, like we know this guy's listening, right? Right. He right, took right. the time to send in a He'll question, so he's going to listen to see what it says. So, yeah. okay, Chris, all right, turn your volume up a little bit. <laughs> all right. Don't screw this up, man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> First of all, you have. <laughs> Don't screw this up. So every now and then, yes, uh, it's not common, but I have had a, a, my three-year-old that I have right now was, was born to this world this way. Naturally would let you walk in and put the birds up. Right. Strong, natural retriever. Yeah. This is given to me from her ancestors. Right. right? So it's all mine to screw up. Mm-hmm. So how do you not screw it up? Well, 
with that particular dog, she was born at the right window of the year where I was able to keep the whole first season of her very first bird contact were wild birds, mm-hmm. and for that whole first season was all wild birds. Wow. Now, how that maintains natural staunchness is they their willingness to lift as you approach. Yeah. You get anywhere near that dog... Mm-hmm. Boom, the birds are up. And right. those dogs with a lot of point are standing until the flush. Yeah. You know, reluctant to fly chuckers and quails where you got to kick around in front mm-hmm. of them. Sooner or later, they see them, they run, right. they don't want to fly. You're asking a whole lot out of a dog. Well, he's, there's no training. It's right. DNA. He's going to start going. Right. Right. So you're kind of crashing that natural staunchness in the dog mm-hmm. right there. Because we don't have any woe training. It's all right. DNA, right? Right. So a lot of that is manipulating the environment until the dog has been woe broke. Yeah. He needs to get this dog completely woe trained, separate from pointing and birds, to the point where he in can the stop yard, in yard, the yard training, and, then, field, and then in the field woe to where that dog can come running by him and whoa, and the dog stops and waits to be released. He can walk like all a around. Dog. Absolutely. Well, I don't know about yeah, that. Which is really woe broke. Yeah. Nothing to do with pointing and birds. Right. And then he needs to connect the two. He won't yeah. take anything out of the dog because right. anytime the dog goes to move, you can correct him for disobedience, for disobedience to woe. Yeah. Yeah. So the retrieve, don't mess with it. Just right. you know, it's there, right? He yeah. showed it. He may quit down the road, he may not, but he has a very good genetically right. talented dog. So no bad birds. Now that kind of leads me to a good point, because once a dog is woe broke yeah. and reliably steady. Notice a lot of times I'm like, ah, these bad birds and everything. That's yeah. with puppies, because with puppies, we can't control what they're going to do once they get around these birds. They're right. going to do what they're going to do, and right. that means we need a bird to do what we need it to yeah. do. We need to get as up close and get to out wild of there. as we can. Yeah, I think I have, but we need a bird that's going to get up and get out of there. Right. Right? Once a dog is woe broke and we can control them around their birds Mm -hmm. now you got a little more wiggle room with the situations you put them in with released birds because now we have a little more of a say in what the dog can or can't do so it's really where i'm super fussy on birds is with those puppies puppies yeah Yeah. well even to that extent you know when we were training steadiness you know when i have to do that for a dog in fact i think i'm up next year for a Finished utility dog that otherwise will kick me out of the judging team. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, we're in trouble, Justin. We are, You're in trouble, you Justin. You better start puppy shot. I'm going to run that Cocker Spaniel <laughs> in a versatile test to be my best dog. Um, but anyway, to, to that point, you know, there's times when I'll pull wing feathers out of a bird. I want a crappy flyer. Yeah, yeah. Sure. When you get to that level of so you're, you're purposely proofing your dog's steadiness. Yeah, you're proofing it with to something that's not normal. A very tempting situation. Right, sure. Right. So that's strengthening yeah. your. And you know, I do the same thing. Sometimes yeah. I'll intentionally bring another dog along that's not steady, and let oh, that yeah. dog go. Well, right with the birds while I make the other dog stand. That's proofing yeah, your training. Proofing it, yeah. Go, hey, I don't care what else is going on. In this situation, but this is what you have woe. to do. Yeah, and that is, in fact... Woe off birds. That's the answer to this guy's question. Same Two-year-old thing. Llewellyn hunting nicely. He's not quite as lucky as that last guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting her to woe during the shot, she likes to break and chase after the bird when it's flush. So, sure, so he's got to start with the flush first right. and then the shot. Right. Don't do both at the same time. Mm-hmm. So woe foundation, woe in the presence of flying birds... Whoa, in the presence of gunfire, right. connect the dots, all built one piece at a time. Mm-hmm. And um, so and it's going to take you a while if your dog's got any amount of drive, and that's okay. You go at the dog's pace, and uh, that's that. So yeah. that's all pretty standard issue pointing steadiness. So um, he, he shouldn't, he shouldn't try times, and take any shortcuts. I don't want to make this longer because mm. we're getting close, but yeah. um, how many times have you seen... And I and I did it to one of my dogs. Don't even know if I did what I think I did. Um, was getting ready for a test, kind of rushed through the steadiness, where it was he was basically afraid to move. I don't think I really foundationed his steadiness, but I got him through it. But when he would go to get those birds that were shot by the gunners, then all of a sudden his retrieving went to crap. Was that him getting back at me? For making him wait? It wasn't calculated revenge. It was... Wasn't, we didn't anthropomorphize that no, dog, but... No, it was not calculated. But I mean, I saw an absolute, like, there and back retriever that I never asked to be steady to wing shot and fall. Yeah. That, and I made him steady to wing shot and fall. And I mean, at warp speed. 
I'm embarrassed to say how quick I did it. I but I saw his retrieving really flounder. Sure. For okay. that for that test. You know, there. if you know, if you think like a dog, it's so simple, right? Okay. So <laughs> retrieving is go get it, right? Yeah. Okay. What is steady and wing shot and fall? Don't do anything. And when he tried to go get it, you jumped him for it, right? Pretty yeah, good. Yep. Trying to cram it down his yep. throat. Like, you can't. All right. So you so took now, the wind out of his like, like, oh, man, I don't know about going to get these things, right? So, okay. of course, you saw kind of a whole hum retrieve in yeah. him. Yeah. He's almost confused yeah. then. And he was out of balance. You know, right. he had been allowed to break and chase and break and chase. And then. Now I can't run. You got a test on Saturday. I'm... So I'm guessing this was like Thursday mm, evening. Maybe Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. I mean, you didn't put it off to the day before. I knew better than that. So, right. so that's yeah. but that's what why you, you think saw I'm crazy. It. I'm gonna I wait know. till the day before. Yeah. All right. So I, I saved the best for last. All right, this is All the right. best, best one. for last. You're gonna read this while I, I go. Take I am because there's. Yeah, go ahead. You layer it well, up. No, you need to hear some of this. So right. you better hit pause. Hang on, man. Yeah, you gotta hear. Just this. hit pause for a second. We are back. Okay. Right. Let's go. Go bathroom break. All right. Save the best for last. And my favorite question of all, fifty some of them left over here. Okay. Ron, I cannot get enough of your podcast. I love the show's texture, your personality, conversations, and all the information your talks generate. Well, thank you. While I've been interested in hunting since I was a kid, I did not grow up in a hunting family. It's been quite a serious learning process, not only how to shoot, where to go, what to wear, and basically how to enter into the sport, especially not knowing many women hunters. Having said that... I had no idea how much I was going to love hunting until I got my pup last summer. Wow. I have a six-month-old poodle pointer, and I live in Idaho. And as I've taken her out among wild birds, I've discovered not only is she birdie, but I'm crazy about finding birds, too. The hunt is addicting, and this fall has been and continues to be great fun as we both, the pup and I, are learning to be effective hunters together. So I do have a few questions if I'm not sending them in too late. First, how much training should go into a pup before the Navda natural ability test? I ask because the test is supposed to test a dog's genetic hunting abilities, and I don't want to mask any weaknesses that might exist. I'm awfully curious about how she'd do on her own. But after listening to the episode with Phil Swain, Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. got the impression I should be doing more training. Mm. It seems a fine balance between training what's not there and fostering what nature's already given a dog. For my pup, I'm thinking of two areas, holding a staunch point in the search and fetching the bumper in the water retrieve. First, holding a good and solid point seems to hardly exist, at least for birds. She points all the field mice in the vicinity. As soon as she gets a hint of bird, the most she might do is pause and dives right on in. I'm convinced she thinks she can catch them. As an aside, she does manage to catch plenty of things, such as a rabbit or toad, Crippled pheasant, someone else shot, or the quail we launched that wouldn't fly, or hardly. Mm -hmm. Can you tell I'm a beginner? Yeah. All right. Here we are. There is a sentence of absolute brilliance in there that is so far beyond her experience level. You mean earlier where you read? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somewhere buried. There is a sentence there of absolute brilliance. Yeah. That I, I'm amazed. And aside from her flattering comments about you, this yeah, is a yeah. smart girl. Right. She gets exactly. it. Yeah. She needs to find something to do. She's like, listen to me, Yammer. No, no, no. So, check that thing off. And uh, so, here's, here's what just j- absolutely jumped out at me, you know. It seems a fine balance between training what's not there and fostering what nature's already given the dog. Yeah. This girl gets it I, I listened to that too this I was like, girl when gets you were it. reading I was going what well, she's it's absolutely she's put some thought either that or somebody's no. told her to say that no she, no the dude who helped her with this quail that could hardly fly mm-hmm. in a launcher yeah. he didn't come up he with didn't that. Come with no that. no yeah. no offense to that guy but um, you know she didn't do that with six months so she's been listening this to us about right. the importance of developing puppies right, right, good right. strong flying birds naturally she lives in what is arguably maybe the greatest state for a bird hunter to live in in the United States. Yeah. Um, so, and it sends, she's been going out and looking for wild birds yeah. with her pup. And I know more than anything in the world, she wants to see this dog point. Yes, right? Yes, so yeah. don't, it, it will 
happen if yeah. you let it happen. Right. But don't try and force it to happen with launchers and poor flying birds. Yep. And you keep hiking around them hills looking for wild birds. And one of these days, I promise this girl, she's going to look Good up point. and there's that going to be that dog standing there on point. Yeah. She's going to allow those genetics to express. Yeah. And, and so that was why I wanted you... And on this, she, you know, she's obviously going to do the NA test, right. you know, and then she's getting the little feeling like, hey, wait a minute, should I be really trying to teach some of this stuff? Right. You know, what's right. your take on that? Well, it, it almost sounded like she planned on breeding it for a second to me because well, I didn't, I didn't catch well, any only of that. because she's like that she was going to mask something, and mm-hmm. and I've got an issue with you know people who mask something and then breed the dog. So she yeah. doesn't want to mask something, right? Training, she doesn't right? want to mask it. Yeah. So I thought maybe she was like looking at this big, big picture. So I won't read that deep into it. No. All right. Natural ability test. It it, it looks at the seven inherited traits of a of a of a bird dog. Okay. Sure. They are all naturally inherited to some different degree. Um, can you just take a dog that you lived in your apartment with for six months and bring no. it to a natural ability test? No. no. Nor nor could you go hunting with it the no. first day. So. You're not gonna, you're not going to mask anything. All you're trying to do is is expose it to all the things it's going to do in the test. It's an instinct, but that instinct needs it nurturing needs and development. Out. It's yeah. no different than a kid with a musical gift or an athletic gift. They still have to go to practice. You, you got to give them the yeah. But you want to make sure that the situations you're exposing yeah. the six month old right. are are quality experiences right. that foster and nurture those right. good things. Yeah, I don't go to a natural ability yeah. test and expect that dog to swim after a bumper. No, first time it came up to a bank of water. I walk that dog through some creeks, and I walk it into some shallow water, and pretty yeah. soon... So, yeah, there is... You could call that training, no, right? You could call oh, it... Oh, sure. You could it call is. it exposing. Absolutely, it's training. No, um, it's, it's development. It's, it's development. Really development. Good training, yeah. you kind of... People think of commands and right. stuff like that. it's training. That. But That's more development it's, instinct. It's developing instinct. Yeah. So, so to, to the water... Have some fun in the water with it. Yeah. To the field. Have some fun in yeah. the field with it. That'll be next spring, right? right? See, it's pretty darn cold right now there. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll have to help me with this one. So yeah. how old do you have to do this test she wants to do? You've got up to 16 months of age. Okay, so she's got 10 months. She's got 10 so months. it'll be like next Her fall. Her problem will be summer. there's not a lot of tests in some parts of the country, and that's what she's worries a, people sometimes. In Idaho? But, they got to have some. Oh, they've got some, yeah. but I'm sure it's not right. like Wisconsin where you could find. And guess we what? Can. If you don't make it to the NA test, that's what I was. You're say. still gonna have fun with this. Dog. That's right. I was gonna say, you don't have to do this. I, I I absolutely love the fact that she's taking that path. Yeah. But I, I agree 100 percent with Justin. Yeah. Get that dog out all spring. Get it off. Other than the quiet nesting season. Yeah. Keep running this dog. Yeah. Um, and if you're not ready for NA test, don't take the NA test. I don't care what the breeder tells you. It's breeder encouragement. Yes, we want you to do this test. We want to see how our pups do. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, he'd rather hear later on that you had a great hunting dog yeah. than you had a dog that flubbed out something on the test because you yeah. did something to it. When that dog, dog is like uh, is a super old, gray muzzle, veteran, yeah, arthritic day, bird dog, that's not what she's going to remember. Mm-mm. I guarantee you that's Mm-mm. not what's going to... The, the lifetime memories ain't going to be that. No. Um, okay, so the next part... Think it's time to do some wool work, or should I let the wild birds teach her she can't catch them? Yes, and yes. Those are not mutually exclusive. It's not an either or proposition. Right. But I want her wool work, I would recommend, have nothing to do with the birds right now. We're right. building that obedience to wool foundation, and yep. we're putting it in our back pocket for later. Right. All right. So Strengthening build that, build the wool, build the wool, build the wool, develop the point, develop the point. When both are good, then we marry them together. And she doesn't need right? to do that in the next... Dog doesn't have to be steady. Uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. And uh, and says she started a little wool work when she feeds her and can't eat till she releases her. Okay, normal good. Stuff. All good normal stuff. Yep. Okay, now here's the part that I need some intel from you. Mm, right. she, uh, okay, along these lines, I'd love it if you'd say more about the, in pr- quotes, takeout puppy you've mentioned in several mm. of your podcasts. Mm-hmm. They're the puppies your friend always looks for, you mentioned in the Phil Swain podcast. Yep. How do you transition from this to a cooperative relationship with a handler? Do you think such a dog, the one that dives in, is cooperative? So you got to fill me in. It says you mentioned it on a couple. What's what's the right. skinny on that? Was the first time I was interviewing, I think it was one of the gates or one of the Big field trial Field trial guy? Yeah. Okay. And he mentioned that he liked that puppy who, he, he wasn't worried about pointing. He, like he said, 
He knows it's in this gene package. He knows they're going to point. Mm-hmm. When he when he first sees them point those puppies just going after birds mm-hmm. without pointing, it doesn't bother him. Yeah. He wants the one though that when it dives into a pile of grass, mm-hmm. it comes out with the bird in its mouth. Mm-hmm. Where some dogs jump into a pile of grass, mm-hmm. they could be five feet away from that ah, bird. Okay, so that's where she might be listening to where. He likes that takeout puppy, uh, but what he likes is that takeout puppy. When it bolts in there with no point, yeah, comes out with a bird in its so, mouth. So okay, so, I, I, boom, I get it, right? Yeah. But I can see how some other people will go. Wait a minute, how do, how could you like this dog? Right, right. They, okay, so here's what was attractive to that guy. Mm-hmm. It's what I've always called an accurate nose. That's what he's saying. Yeah. We don't want a dog that knows there's a bird over there somewhere. And just dies. He, yeah, he knows. That bird is right there. Yeah. That's genetic. He can almost see it through he the knows, grass. He knows that bird is right there. Right. So the whole breaking point and everything, that's going to go away. Yeah. All right? But that nose is what it is. And most of the successful field trialers that compete at the top tier of that game, mm-hmm. you got to remember they're... That's Different the big game. boy club, and yeah. they got to sort through a lot of puppies to mm-hmm. find those two or three right. that they might have a chance to win the big ones with. Right. So it's very different right. than what the average hunters are doing. But having that superior top shelf nose mm-hmm. um, is hugely beneficial. Right. And you know what? Most people who think they've owned or seen a dog that has a great nose, they've seen they've owned or seen a dog that has a good nose. Right. And I've only seen a handful in my life, as many dogs that I've that seen, put that I would say is a on. truly great, phenomenal nose. Right. And once you've seen one like that, you go, ooh, all them other ones I thought had a great nose. They were good, right? right. right? But there is another level. Wow. And those are those kind of dogs that he was referencing. So right. this was that was more, it's not about the takeout. And that's no. what I think she focused yeah, on. Yeah, it wasn't about the takeout. Yeah. It was about accuracy. Of nose. And, and I can relate that. And I've seen puppies that, you know, you, because we got to plant birds in cover that you know they'll sure. stick in, right? Yeah. And I've seen so many. You know, I'd rather see them point first birds. Apparently, mm-hmm. you know, Mr. Gates didn't worry about it. He's known birds his whole dogs his whole life. But I've seen that puppy dive into a pile of grass yeah. and just keep diving and sure. diving yeah. and diving, and eventually the bird's like, "I better get out of here." Yeah. And I've seen puppies go into that grass pile, mouse on the bird. Like, how did it know? Yeah. It's like it had X-ray vision yeah, going into the grass. The yeah, nose was su- that accurate. Superior nose. You know, I have. There's one of the dogs I've seen that has that upper, you know, tier of nose I've seen in my life mm-hmm. uh, is alive and in the kennels right now as we yeah. speak. And I, and I knew it when she was a pup, right? Really? But here's an example of that. So, Mern's quail are notorious for a staggered flush. They don't often all get up in unison. Okay. Right? One, two, like a, a like, couple more. I like young like sharpies. Do young sharp tails are notorious yeah. for that right. as well, right? Sage grouse too. So yeah. last year, standing there on point, I walk in. One, I was scouting, no shooting. One quail gets out. Two, three more. Four. Five. I walk around some more. And there's still more birds. Uh, yeah, no, I was, I was no, at five at this five. point. Right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm walking around, walking around. That's it. Okay. And so I, all right, Lucy, she wouldn't move. Mm-hmm. And I walk back a little closer to her. All right. No, she wouldn't move. Hmm. I walk back out in front of her. Well, I walk around a little more. So one more goes out of there. So there were six birds feeding in an area mm-hmm. about the size of your pickup truck. Which is that went bit. ones and twos, and three, mm-hmm. four, five. And I told her it was. I thought it was over. I told her to right. go. She yep. knew from what she smelled. No, there's there's, there's one more there. There's one more. There's one more there. Yeah. Right. That's, that's no. Crazy. That's the kind of nose I'm talking yeah. about. And that's it's so rare. Yeah. It's absolute luck to get it. But I think. Th- it, it, your listeners focus, I think, sometimes on the takeout part of it and go, ah, that's bad. What do right, you mean? Right. No, no. What he's talking about is that super deadly super accurate, accurate nose. nose. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, and that goes to what we said in the beginning of part one. Or we, on one of them, why our scorecard says use of nose. We, we don't ever say quality of nose yeah. because they're, the quality, we can't even fathom what a dog's quality of nose is. You know? Yeah. I mean, the, the way it's built and structured. But the use of it, and putting it together with birds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen, when you describe that, I don't know if I've ever seen a group. I've only yet. seen a small handful. Wow. That the truly, uh, at that very yeah. top tier. Um, so, anyways, the next part of this 
I don't know, we'll see. The second training issue regards water work. A few mm-hmm. times I tried to get the pup to swim. She clearly did not like it and mm-hmm. immediately swam to shore. Right. Now it's too cold to do mm-hmm. much in the water. Based nope. on what others have said, I like the idea that the water work is more about the hunting drive to retrieve than it is about love of water. Right. If this is right, my plan is to encourage her prey and fetching drive as much as possible and to get her to love bringing me bumpers. Yep. What are your thoughts about this, and do you think this will be enough? To get her in the water for the NA test. What are some good ways to get my dog to eagerly enter water? Well, I can tell you what I started developing. Yeah. Um, and you see how many and, pups go through I, these tests. And I've so. had these goofy Broncos who are 50-50 with water. <laughs> yeah. The minute I go play with a puppy at the water now, if I don't see... If I don't see that dog when it just even... And I don't throw no bumper 20 feet into the water. No. I, mean, I just throw a stick in ankle-deep, chest-deep water. If I don't see that puppy just go in there and get it, or within a day or two, if it gets in that water and shows me anything like licking, drinking, you know, starting to drink the lake, you know, for some reason, just stop to... I'm like, you're not even focused on what I just threw in the water. You're kind of yeah. blowing me off a little bit. I don't get that dog near the water again until I have a live bird. Mm-hmm. And I will take a live bird, and I'll pluck the wing feathers on one side, and I'll throw that bird right in... Five feet into the water, and it won't even be swimming depth water. Yeah. So her first, and that, and I've already known this dog likes birds. So I'll bring that water thing right toward the end, toward test time. So this dog already likes birds. I'm, it's pointing, at least in my luck, I've always had the, the pointing go on my side. Tracking? <laughs> you might want to worry about tracking, dear. <laughs> it's a big one. But um, for water, then, once you know you got a bird crazy dog, Live bird in the water. I've yeah. used pigeons, quail, chucker. Yeah. Um, Madzal. You've met Matt. He had oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pat's litter mate. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Pat. Hopefully see you shout soon, Pat. Pat. He's in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah you'll yeah, see him soon. I will. Um, we took, in my little pond in my backyard, I grabbed a domestic duck, you know, bought it from a breeder. Yeah. His dog didn't want to go in the water for nothing. But it was, you know, it was, other than that, it was a, just a whack case dog. Just, I'll do anything. I'll crash through anything. I'll go after birds. I took that duck, tossed that pond. That dog didn't even know how to swim. And it chased that duck for 20 minutes in that yeah. pond. Yeah. He didn't even think about the fact that he was swimming. Yeah. All he thought about the fact that he had to get a bird. Yeah. And the only thing that time that won't work good for you is you got a dog that won't use its back legs. Sure. Because <laughs> now you got a boat that's taken on water. So yeah. make sure you... If you've seen the dog swim and just go back to shore, stay away from the water for a while until it's warm out and use live birds. Because don't mess with bumpers. Because if it already doesn't like the water, it ain't going to go in the it water. Sounds like it, it sounds like just one bad experience. And the yeah. other thing, the only thing I would add to that yeah. is um, you want a firm bottom and a gradual yes. drop off. Yeah, well, Those are sure. two constants there to set your pup up to be successful. Yep. And I don't do much water work these days, but right. I, I'll, those puppies, you know, I want my dog to be comfortable going into the water, right, you know. Right. Um, I'll walk right in there with them. It's right. summertime, like you know. Launch, yeah, perfect. yeah, nice firm, hard yeah. bottom that has a gradual drop and just kind of. Yep. And your puppy will swim when it's ready to ready swim. To swim. And you don't force it, right? Just like yeah, your dog's force just like your dog's gonna point birds. Don't force when point. don't force it. Sometimes you put your hands in there, you're just muddying the waters. Mm-hmm. You're just mucking it up for you know you're not in, you're actually inhibiting those yeah. genes yeah. more than anything. Yep. And dogs so. can read it, and they just they just know when something's. It's almost like they know when something's sour. They're like. Yeah. 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 It's just so. I think that is the end. Of right. I hope we helped her a little bit. I'm not 100 percent sure we did. Hillary, she can call. Write me, and questions. I'll walk you all the way through the test again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Justin. Beautiful. Man, I appreciate it. You Absolutely. Good luck on your trips. Thank and you. All that good shit. Yeah. Um, I'll stay in touch. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, let me know how the birds are in Arizona when you get there. So if I die, uh, I do want to take a flight down, I don't want to go there to not see a bird. Uh, okay, then. I don't even care if I have a gun. You got an extra gun, though, when I get there? Yeah, and I'm not sure this is the year for you to come. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I don't even have to get there yet. <laughs> oh, boy. So. On that note, I won't be going to Arizona, everybody. See ya. All right.